CBS, the Big East against the SEC. After a 12 tackle performance a week ago, Vanderbilt linebacker Chris Marr showed why he is one of the best in the SEC. A familiar face returned to the sidelines a week ago for Connecticut. His head coach Paul Pascaloni returned from a five-year college hiatus. Stay tuned for a power conference battle as the SEC on CSS presented by Regents Bank is about to explode. Welcome back to Music City, USA. For the second straight week, we come to you live from Nashville, Tennessee, as the 1-0 UConn Huskies take on the 1-0 Vanderbilt Commodores. And good evening. I'm Matt Stewart. Vandy opened their season with a 45-14 victory over Elon last Saturday night. Tonight, going for consecutive victories for the first time since 2008. They opened that year 5-0, and they finished that year with their first bowl victory since 1955. Time now to bring my partner, legendary Florida Gators wide receiver Chris Dorian. And Chris, in that 08 season, big factor, they were plus nine turnover margin. They were plus three in their opener. Yeah, protecting the football is huge, and they have been deficient in that the last two seasons. They did a good job of protecting it and creating turnovers last week, and that led to their week uh, one victory against Elon. All right, Chris, let's give it our Cook's Pest Control thorough inspection. Yeah, as I mentioned, uh, the defense very opportunistic in creating three turnovers last week. We've seen them do that in the past defense. But what we haven't seen is the Vanderbilt offense capitalizing on those turnovers and creating points. Last week with those three turnovers, created 21 points directly, including a touchdown by the defense. They took it into their own hands as Trey Wilson took it to the house for the pick six. First pick six of his career. Meantime, the Huskies opened with a 35-3 victory over Fordham. Did it without their top tailback, DJ Shoemate, who was out with an injury. His backup, Lyle McCombs, went for 141 and scored four touchdowns. Yeah, Lyle McCombs got the surprise start as Shoemate went down with the ankle injury, but came up big in his first collegiate start. 141 rushing yards. That ranks second in UConn history for a guy coming out in his first start. Great job by him. We'll see both tonight, though. Should be a powerful combination for the Huskies. It's the UConn Huskies and the Vanderbilt Commodores. Huskies beat Vandy last year on the way to an 8-5 record. Big East Championship and first ever berth in a BCS Bowl. Vandy would like to put that memory behind them tonight. Opening kick coming up next. Roy Acuff and Mini Pearl, two Music City icons as UConn and Vandy get ready to tee it up tonight. SEC football presented by Regents Bank on CSS. The third member of our broadcast team is Sandra Golden down on the sideline. Hi, Matt. Thanks so much. You know, that big win last week over Elon was a big part of the process for Coach Franklin in changing the culture of Vanderbilt football. But interestingly enough, it might have been Coach Franklin to learn the greatest lesson. They go right back to work on Sunday morning. And Coach Franklin told me he just kind of skirted over, congratulations on the win over Elon. This week we got UConn. They got three quarterbacks. They got nine uh, veterans on the defense. So they go to work. Well, at the end of the day, his Yoda, Coach Franklin calls him, Coach Galt, the strength and conditioning coach, comes in and says, Coach Franklin, I don't know how to tell you, but wins have been few and far between here at Vanderbilt. You can't just skirt over it. We need to celebrate each win, make a big deal of it. So Coach Franklin told us, he goes, you know what? I'm the worm. I've got to change the culture because unfortunately, it's been losing as a habit. He's got a lot of work to do. Matt? Thank you, Sandra. And James Franklin told us about 35 minutes ago when we met with him on the field, he had some surprises for us tonight, Chris. They're going with the black helmets tonight for the first time since 1990. And yeah, the black looks good out there. The all black for Vanderbilt tonight, but anxious to see how this offense takes the next step. They were very good in terms of the, the basic that they, they did last week. No turnovers. Larry Smith read his progressions well. They got the ball to the open receiver. But what we need to see tonight is them to take that next step offensively against a good UConn opponent. Carry Spear to kick off for the Commodores and Nick Williams, the top kick returner in the nation a year ago, will bring it back for the Huskies. He's hit by Trey Wilson immediately inside the 20-yard line as he just barely gets back to the 20, and that's where the Huskies go on offense for the first time tonight. Let's take a look at our Tony Sachery's ingredients for success. The ingredients for success tonight for UConn. they got to control the line of scrimmage. Offensively, defensively, they want to solve their problems with aggression, as their defensive coordinator, Coach Brown, told us. And then for Vanderbilt, offensive consistency. We'll talk a little bit more about the lack of consistency, consistency they had last week. And defensively, they got to be assignment sound, recognizing which quarterbacks in the game 
They're going to try to be multiple on offense, a lot of motion, so they got to be assignment sound with what they're seeing at the line of scrimmage. I'm going to get the patent on the T-shirt for that. Solve problems through aggression as McCombs gets the first carry. McCombs run out of bounds over the far side by Chris Marr, just a two-yard gain. And we see Lyle McCombs line up and start the ball game at tailback and not D.J. Shoemate. Yeah, Shoemate, the transfer from USC, they expected a lot out of him this year, but he injured his ankle on the Thursday of last week prior to their opening game against Fordham. And as we talked about in the open, McCombs stepped in with that 141-yard performance, four touchdowns, and he's back at it tonight already. Second down, ball is at the 22. Now McCombs in the backfield by himself. Pass is complete to Ryan Griffin, their big tight end, and I mean he is big at 6'6", 248. He is a load when he gets that ball out in space. It's a first down for the Huskies at about the 41-yard line. And Matt, for being 6'6", and 250 pounds, this guy has great body control. He's the kind of tight end that you see at the next level that's able to block well in the line of scrimmage on the end there, but also a good pass receiver, as we saw him there on that uh, Y stick. Three catches, 97 yards, including a 55-yard touchdown reception from Scott McCummings, one of three quarterbacks the Huskies will use in this ballgame. McCombs dances to the outside and Lyle McCombs up to the 42-yard line. I think I'd said 42 in the reception, 37 up to the 42 there. That is a five-yard pickup. Richardson and Javon Marshall, the two safeties, and on the tackle for the Commodores. Matt, as I told you in the keys there to this ballgame, the UConn offensive line once they control the line of scrimmage, they're a veteran offensive line. They're probably one of the most experienced units on that offense going against the defensive line that likes to roll eight or nine guys in there for Vanderbilt. So they'll stay fresh. It's going to be important to see if UConn can stay fresh into the third and fourth quarters as well. McCombs out of Staten Island, New York, redshirt freshman. He was a big deal in the city of New York. Waited his turn to run the ball this year after Jordan Todman left early for the NFL. New quarterback in. And McCummings picks up the first down at the 48-yard line. He's the second of the three quarterbacks that we will see. McCummings is the redshirt freshman out of Massachusetts who's kind of their wildcat guy. And when we talked to Paul Pasqualoni on Wednesday about their quarterback rotation, he said, really, it's because we haven't seen one guy consistently step up and earn that starting job. So we'll see all three of the quarterbacks tonight. There is a plan that they want to utilize. It's not just helter-skelter and throwing a guy in there. McCummings is the more athletic of the three quarterbacks. So we'll see him run a lot of the Wildcat stuff as well. McEntee back in there as the quarterback. McEntee had played in only two games prior to this season. So a lot of inexperience and a gaping hole and a jitterbug move for McCombs gets inside the 30. And UConn gashing Vandy on this opening possession. Now take a look right here. We talked about controlling the line of scrimmage. Great kick out block by the fullback Hinkley there to open the hole. And then McCombs busts through there. He's a little guy, but he put on some weight in the offseason. He's certainly shifty with some of those cuts he has, but doing a great job right now of picking up big yardage in chunks. Yeah, a year ago, Jordan Todman ran for 190 yards on 37 carries against this Vanderbilt defense. First and 10. Pitch is loose. And McCombs gets back on top of it. That play got blown up by Archie Barnes, the linebacker, who laid a licking on McCombs, the quarterback. McCummings, the quarterback, I should say. Yeah, Matt, this is what I'm talking about. Assignment sound. Archibald there on the end of the line of scrimmage. His job is to take the quarterback in the option game. What he does is he creates a disruption at the point of attack. He tries to read it, but reads it a little too late and a bad pitch to McCombs there on the option. And Bob Shoup, the defensive coordinator for Vanderbilt, said there's actually some benefit to the defense in them having three different quarterbacks. You have a better idea of what play they're yep. going to run depending upon what quarterback they have in the ball game. McEntee's back in there now. The starting quarterback, more of a prototypical drop-back passer. McCombs on the run. Nice moves. Kitt's got some slippery in him, and he gets down to the 30-yard line. Picked up eight on the play, and there's a flag down. Well, you can see why they like Lyle McCombs. You mentioned that he... You mentioned that he had the second-best freshman debut of any UConn player ever the 141 behind the 144 for Tony Brown back in 1978. Offside, line up in the neutral zone. Number 15 of the defense, five yard penalty, second down. John McDade, the referee, heading this Big East officiating crew tonight. 
but as a point of reference, Lyle McCombs, how does he compare to their first round pick, Donald Brown from a couple of years ago? Brown in his debut went for 118 against Rhode Island in 06. Pretty good guy to compare himself to right there, right? Absolutely. Great uh, player for the Indianapolis Colts now. Third year now with the Colts. First first round pick in UConn history. McCombs, another big hole. I tell you what, that Huskies front five is just putting the wood to the Vanderbilt defensive line right now. Morrison Richardson on the tackle. Matt, let's take a look here. Ryan Griffin, the tight end, 94 on the end, just crashes down inside to take the end out of the play, opening up the hole for Lyle McCombs there on another big run. The offensive line doing a good job to this point of imposing their will on the Vanderbilt defensive front. McCombs four for 41 right now, a gaudy 10 yards per carry average. He comes out, and they bring in Jonathan Zong-Louis. Lined up next to the fullback, Mark Hinkley. McEntee to the air, and it is caught for a first down at the 12-yard line by Isaiah Moore. Nice play by Isaiah Moore here. Last year, 15 catches with one touchdown. Didn't do an awful lot, but he's going to be counted on a lot more this season. Good job getting the feet down, securing the catch, and giving UConn a first down at about the 12-yard line. Yeah, he's a fifth-year senior out of Cambridge, Mass. Two catches, 42 yards last week against Fordham. And head coach Paul Pascaloni, very complimentary of his two fifth-year senior wide receivers, even when they did not have the ball coming their way. The Combs dropped in the backfield by Rob Lohr. Big Rob Lohr led this team with eight tackles for loss a year ago, and there's one right there. Matt, the play was made by Casey Hayward there coming up, creating penetration in the backfield. That allowed the running back, or forced the running back to have to bounce outside, and then good pursuit by Rob Lohr from the inside out. Nice play by the secondary player in Casey Hayward, who when we talked to some of the coaches, the, of all the things he does well, tackling probably not the best, so he's worked to improve that, and his aggressiveness paid off there for the uh, Vanderbilt defense. This is the 10th play of the drive, but now they, after their first negative yardage play, it's second down and long. Got to get to the two for the first down. McCombs gets to the outside, and McCombs down to the 11-yard line. Javon Marshall getting the start again tonight at that safety position in place of Kenny Ladler made the tackle. Kind of what we expected from UConn here tonight. Come out, try to run the football, have some success on the ground like they did last week against Fordham. But one of the reasons they had so much success and why you were able to break off long runs like we've seen tonight and like McCombs had last week is because of the blocking of the receivers. Keep an eye on the wide receiver for UConn. They did an outstanding job last week and already tonight Doing a good job downfield as well. It is third down and eight. Delahunt, the tight end in motion behind the line. McEntee. And Moore stopped in his tracks at the nine-yard line. Isaiah Moore with his second catch of the possession. But it's going to be a field goal situation now for UConn. That's nice defense there by Vanderbilt. Normally we're used to seeing them bring pressure. They fall back. They give up the shallow cross and do a good job of coming up, making an open field tackle by Chase Garnum, who played well at times last week. But some of the coaches told us we need those younger guys like Garnum, like Tristan Strong, to play with a little bit more consistency tonight. And Garnum did a great job there forcing the field goal. Dave Teggert with a field goal here becomes the all-time leading scorer in UConn history, and he does it. Pops the short field goal through, and the UConn Huskies have taken a 3-0 lead on the Vanderbilt Commodores, but the Doors get a stop inside the 10-yard line. SEC football on CSS is brought to you by Regions Bank. Want more control and balance with your finances? Switch to Regions, the easier way to bank. Regions Bank, the official bank of the SEC. By Tony Sacheries, turn your same old into Creole with Tony Sacheries' original Creole seasoning. Tony Sacheries makes everything taste great. And by Geico, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Call Geico at 1-800-947-AUTO. That's 1-800-947-AUTO or visit geico.com. Back in Nashville, Tennessee, UConn with the early 3-0 lead on the 25-yard field goal by Dave Taggart. 
The Ram truck scoring drive, 12 plays, 72 yards, took close to seven and a half minutes, but Chris Dory, and that was a big stop by Vandy inside that 10 yard line to force him into the field goal. Yeah, to uh, bend but not break there, to only give up the field goal after pretty much having been dominated on that possession was a big win for the Vanderbilt defense. We'll see if the offense of Vanderbilt can take advantage of some of that momentum that the defense created. And here is the kickoff. Eric Samuels will take it at the three yard line. Samuels straight up the middle, stumbles forward to the 26. And that's where Bandy goes on offense for the first time tonight. Larry Smith, not great numbers last week, but much more confident. Well, we talked to James Franklin last week. He said he wanted to see Larry Smith work his possession or uh, uh, progressions. You saw him look to the left, hold off the, the corner on that side, knowing that he had the receiver coming back there. And of course, the athletic ability that they utilized of Larry Smith on the little zone read did a good job of reading that end and bursting up the field with that speed that he has. So we'll watch for him tonight with that multi-dynamic ability that he has in the quarterback position. Fifth year senior out of Prattville, Alabama High School where he was a state champion. Larry Smith making his 23rd career start here tonight. Right the snap, false start. Number 50 of the offense, five yard penalty, first down. Larry Smith, 13 of 27 passing a week ago, less than 50%, which his career completion percentage is 47%. James Franklin said the numbers don't look good if you just saw the stats, but if you were here watching him, he looked much more confident and settled and poised in the pocket. First and 15, Larry Smith, plenty of time, gunning downfield and threw it behind his open wide receiver, Jonathan Grouse. Yeah, last week when we saw some Aaron throws, it was because they had pressure breaking through and making him throw the ball inconsistently. At that time, a two-man route had the receiver, Jonathan Krause, coming open across the middle. Larry Smith didn't step into the throw and deliver. That's something we've seen him do in the past when he's had some open receivers there. So we hopefully, for his sake, we'll see him bounce back for that and have a little bit more accuracy as the game moves on. Yeah, in defense of his stats, and now they're going Wildcat again, and Casey Hayward, or rather actually uh, Trey Wilson, number eight, is lined up in the Wildcat spot right there, and Trey Wilson gets only one yard right up the middle. So last week, we saw Zach Stacy. actually that was Zach Stacy. So pardon me, not, not, not eight, number two. Zach Stacy, the running back line up there, and I got confused on the Trey Wilson because they put the corner back there last week too. Yeah, we saw Wilson play some offense, we saw Hayward play some offense, and James Franklin said, look, we're trying to get playmakers on the field. We're gonna use whatever guys we have to to have production offensively and defensively, so let's look for some more surprises from Franklin tonight. See Stacy's numbers, he's back lined up as a running back, and Larry Smith now out of the shotgun, heavy rush, as he throws, and it's complete at the 34-yard line to John Cole. That's a nice play by Larry Smith. What they did was they faked like they were going to run the screen to the right and then had Cole coming across the middle open there, stood in there under some duress and delivered a good accurate throw that time. That was Trevardo Williams, the defensive end junior for UConn that brought the pressure that time, had a sack a week ago against Fordham. But on fourth down, UConn forces Vanderbilt into a punting situation. Kent last year punted the ball 84 times, which was uh, number one in the NCAA. Last week, only five punts, a little bit better, bringing that average down a little bit. Nick Williams will have it hit in front of him, takes a UConn bounce back towards the 30-yard line, and that's where the Huskies go on offense for the second time in this ball game, leading Vandy 3-0 right now on CSS. Welcome back to Vanderbilt Stadium in Nashville, Tennessee, where UConn is leading Vanderbilt with about six minutes to go. The score is 3 nothing, And we just saw Lyle McCombs put on a show. But listen, DJ Shoemate says, I blame Irene. Shoemate is obviously the senior, the transfer from Southern California. He was all good to go. And then lo and behold. Well, the pick right I'll there. You guys take it. We'll finish later. How about Kenny Lather stepped right in front of that pass by McEntee for the interception at the 41-yard line. Yeah, the receiver had a step on Ladler there. And Ladler has been hurt by a little bit of a nagging hamstring injury. But what a great job he did there in closing on an, on an open receiver. Here you see 
Ladler reading the crossing route, then stepping in front to make a big play. He didn't start last week. Javon Marshall started in his place because of that hamstring injury. He hadn't been able to practice consistently, but the coaches said he had a better week of practice. Obviously feeling much better out there with the pick. Yeah, and Chris, that takes us back to our Cooks pest control thorough inspection. Bandy now plus four in the turnover margin so far this season. Larry Smith, play action, going deep. Boyd, touchdown! 42 yards, Chris Boyd. How about his ratio, Chris? Three catches, three touchdowns this season. And yeah, we showed Chris Boyd there when we talked about Larry Smith with the touchdown catch, making that first one last week, and here he comes back on the deep pylon route. Does a good job, but the throw is what makes it there. He's not wide open. But Larry Smith does a good job of dropping it in where only he can make a play. And boy, the guy that's been inconsistent in the past, but starting to come into his own. Big frame, big receiver, big threat for this offense. Yeah, Chris Boyd, he looks good getting off the bus. He looks good on the football field, too, as he gives Bambi a 7-3 lead as Spear puts the PAT through. Larry Smith up top to Chris Boyd for six. Vanderbilt now with a 7-3 lead on UConn following the 42-yard touchdown catch from Chris Boyd from Larry Smith and a good start for James Franklin here in game number two as the Vandy coach. And Chris Boyd, three catches, three touchdowns in his first two collegiate games. Going to challenge the record of my partner, Chris Doring, who had 31 touchdown catches in his SEC career. Yeah, off to a good start here. Three catches, three touchdowns. As a freshman, man, we better slow him down a little bit. I know you're selfish about that. Thing. You've been holding on to it for a while. I got like, one thing left, man. I got to hold on to something. I want to hold on to it for a little while longer. Nick Williams will take this kick from the six-yard line for the Huskies. And Williams, oh man, got clobbered at the 21-yard line by Stephen Clark. And just like Chris talked about in the open, turnovers leading the points for the Commodores. Yeah, last week, 21 points off the three turnovers. And then tonight, right after the Ladler interception, James Franklin decides to throw the ball deep. And what a play by Larry Smith and Chris Boyd. Something they haven't been able to do in the past is take advantage of those turnovers and really have had a hard time completing those big plays. So it's nice for Vanderbilt fans to see a little bit of that tonight. And it makes for those easy Ram truck scoring drives of one play, 42 yards, nine seconds. Yeah, if you were to look at the time of possession here in the first quarter, you'd think that UConn was dominating the football game, but 7-3 is the score in Vanderbilt's favor. Only one total yard for Vanderbilt so far in the ball game on the ground. Yet they have the 7-3 lead on the 42-yard touchdown pass. Now the Huskies back on offense. McEntee still in there at quarterback and a big hole for McCombs. They're going to have to figure out a way to slow him down. He gashes the defense again for 12 yards and a first down. Now back to Sandra Golden, who was talking to us when they had the big interception and the touchdown. Yeah, we were talking about uh, poor Shoemate. He was set to go on that Thursday night. And remember, Hurricane Irene rolls to the Northeast. They postponed that game. UConn has a practice, and that's when Shoemate turns his ankle. So that's why Lyle was playing last week and put, up, put on a show, 141 yards and four touchdowns. Shoemate says, I blame the woman. Well, there you go, and there's always a woman to blame now, isn't there? <laughs> First and 10, ball at the 34-yard line for the Huskies. McCombs off to another great start here tonight. Gets the handoff again from McEntee and gets to the outside. Kid's got some quicks, and he gets the first down, stepping out of bounds at the 45-yard line. Shoemate, who transferred from Southern Cal, joking with reporters this week, referred to he and McCombs as the thunder and lightning like Reggie Bush and Lindell White. Yeah, McCombs looking good here tonight so far. On that first drive, Five first down plays for UConn. They ran rushing plays on each of those first first down plays. Averaged four yards a carry on the last drive. You saw him come out, try to throw the ball, ended in an interception. I bet we see a lot more runs on first down from here on. McCombs eight for 68 already. Three rushes of 10 plus yards. Jitterbugs to the outside, got tripped up, knocked out of bounds by Ladler, but another fine pickup. Ladler there making another stop with that injury we talked about before, but uh, McCombs, man, very impressed with what he's been able to do tonight. Looks good, but a lot of that credit goes to the offensive line. We haven't seen McCombs get touched as he's broken through the offensive line yet, and uh, great job there controlling the line of scrimmage for the big guys. Yeah, Mo Petrus, their center, making his 
41st consecutive start here tonight. Mike Ryan, their left tackle, 22 career starts. Those two guys are the big anchors up front for what has been an impressive Huskies offensive line so far tonight. Nothing doing for McCombs that time. Really the first time that Vandy has been able to corral him outside of the one big drop they had back here at the 10-yard line. What you're seeing here is Vanderbilt's defensive coordinator, Bob Shoup, getting extra guys up in the box to run support. You see the single high safety. At some point in time, UConn's going to have to make some plays on the outside if Vanderbilt continues to load that box and stop the run. That last play, it was Marv and Westman. The defensive lineman and the linebacker. Remember, Marv had 12 tackles last week, two of them for loss. Outstanding ball game for the Commodores on the defensive side, but you pretty much say that every time Vanderbilt suits up. It's third down now. And a timeout called by the Huskies with 3.23 to play in the quarter. Paul Pascaloni wants to summon his troops over and give them a talking to. Stay up to date with the experts of Southern College Sports. You can follow me. Matt Stewart at Matt underscore Stewart CSS during the game. You can tweet your questions and comments. We'll try to answer some of those questions on the air. You can also find us on Facebook and follow the network at CSS Sports on Twitter, bringing you constant updates from today's game. Let me tell you what, you follow Matt on Twitter, you get your money's worth. No doubt about it. You're the most dedicated tweeter I've ever been around. I make it a mission. We do have one question. We have this time. I'll ask you, since this is a wide receiver type right. question right here. Do you think Vandy's receivers are running better routes over last season? Yeah, I think they're running better routes over last season. I think it's a combination of all of the above, though. What you're seeing is a lot of these young guys start to break through. We saw Jordan Matthews do it last year at the end of the year. Jonathan Krause was coming along. The addition of Chris Boyd, you have a much more explosive playmakers. In the past, Udom Puma was your deep threat, but he was inconsistent with catching the football. John Cole was more of your possession guy. But here you see some big, athletic, fast guys that are running routes a lot better and producing because the quarterback and the coaches have confidence in them. Yeah, Chris Boyd has a chance to be a star in this league, and yeah. he keeps progressing as he has the first couple of games. He's looked good. Passing situation on third down. McEntee throws, and it's broken up. Tristan Strong, the linebacker, stepped in front of it. Had he held on, he might have gone six. Yeah, that, that was a, uh, a poor job by the receiver. The receiver's got to sit down in the hole. They're playing zone. You see the quarterback keeping his eye on the on the wide receiver there on the crossing route. But you have got to sit that down there. Kashif Moore, find the spot there and sit and not confuse your quarterback as he led him into a little bit of danger. Wagner kicks away. John Cole standing deep for Vanderbilt. Let's it go over his head and it rolls into the end zone. Touchback right there. So the Commodores will bring it out to the 20 yard line. So Vandy going on offense for the third time. Their first time three and out. Their second time one play and a touchdown. Yeah, Matt, in the open, we talked about the consistency of Vanderbilt's offense. Last week, it was feast or famine. They scored five offensive touchdowns with an average time of possession on those drives of a minute, 32 seconds, average plays of five plays. And then four of those drives, four of their other possessions were three and out. So 12 total possessions, five touchdown drives, and then on the drives they didn't score touchdowns on, mostly going three and out, they've got to develop a little more consistency as their opponents improve, improve into the season. So first and 10, Huskies show blitz. They hand off to Casey Hayward, and Hayward still on his feet up to the 13-yard, 23-yard line, pardon me, and that is Jerron Seymour, not Hayward. The Jerron, I'm still looking for Hayward. That's the second time. You want time Hayward I'm, in there. You heard, the second you heard time we're going to some Hayward on offense. Here we go with the hurry up. Dave Franklin trying to change tempo on him. Krause, not going anywhere. Dropped back at the 19-yard line. Loss of four on that play. And we'll look to see that a lot. You know, when we spoke to Don Brown, the defensive coordinator of UConn, he was at Maryland with James Franklin, and offensive coordinator John Donovan. He knows them, they, each other very well. It's a great chess match between the two, but he expects Vanderbilt to throw multiple formations, multiple personnel groupings, multiple motions, and change the tempo to try to confuse UConn's defense a little bit. It's third down and 11. Jerron Seymour, the true freshman out of Hialeah, remains in there at tailback. We still have not seen Warren Norman. Up top, Cole is open, and he makes the grab at the 50. 
John Cole slipped behind the corner and a big gainer for the Commodores, 31 yards up to the midfield strike. That's a nice play right there. They acted like they were gonna throw the wide receiver screen. Cole bluffed as if he was gonna block the corner and then got open behind man coverage there for the big play again, taking advantage of those opportunities. Pass to Barton, the tight end, skips by a man close to a first down at the 40. And the Vandy offense starting to click here late in the first quarter. Back to the no huddle here again, creating a little bit of change in pace. The rhythm really looks good for Vanderbilt's offense here on this possession. Changing the tempo. One of the things that James Franklin has preached. Pass batted down at the 47-yard line. Big Teddy Jennings had a huge game last week, subbing in for Jesse Joseph, who's one of their best defensive ends. He blocked that pass. The coaching staff, when we talked to Coach Pasqualoni, talked about how well Teddy Jennings played. Kind of surprised the coaching staff. Didn't realize he was going to be able to step in there and play as, as well as he did. Jerron Seymour with a big hole. Flags are down. Seymour down the sidelines. That's a touchdown, but this might be coming back. Unfortunately for Vanderbilt fans, they got some holding on the outside. Substitution infraction on the defense. Oh. The 12th man didn't get off the field in time. The penalties decline. Wow. Touchdown. 40-yard touchdown run. Jerron Seymour, the true freshman. Lights up the scoreboard, and Vandy has a 13-3 lead. Yeah, I thought when the flags came out there. Look at James like Franklin sprinting down the field, pushing his players off the field. They started a celebration on the field. You can see James Franklin is not happy about it. Spear on for the PAT. 14-3 Vanderbilt. Two touchdown plays totaling. 82 yards. Meantime, Franklin upset that his kids took the opportunity to celebrate on the field. James Franklin said these guys aren't used to prosperity. They're not used to winning. They're not used to success. They've got to learn how to act like they've been there when good things happen. And certainly you saw how emphatic he was about that. Seymour takes it 40 yards. Now watch the big screen here and the player getting off the field late. That's the penalty that costs UConn here. 12 players there on the field when the play starts. Good recognition of that by the referee. And what's amazing is, Chris, when you see a flag like that on a big play, you almost instantly yeah. say, hold me. I did, I prematurely Block in the back, like the spot. You'd see some yeah. receivers getting called for hold out there on the edge, but in, in actuality, it was the uh, illegal participation call. And ironically, it was one of those organizational type penalties, yeah. the kind that Coach James Franklin said he was really pleased that his team stayed away from in the opener. In fact, Bandy has been very clean offensively. Their first snap tonight was a penalty, but outside of that, they've been very clean. Only four penalties so far in almost five quarters of play for Vanderbilt this season. And that's something, again, that we haven't seen a lot of consistency from from Vanderbilt. Normally used to seeing them with crucial penalties or turnovers, and they've done a great job of kind of turning that tide a little bit. Vanderbilt now has a 14-3 lead. Nick Williams will step out of bounds at the one-yard line. He caught it out of bounds right there. So the ball's actually going to come out to the 35-yard line. Well, he caught a break right there. You did see the flag come out, and that's going to be a ball penalty on Andy. Line. Boy, First that down. was close to being a huge mistake by Nick Williams. It was a mistake, but one thing that special teams coaches always coach up on is if you're by the sideline, get one foot out of bounds, catch the ball, and it's going to come out to the 35. I don't know if he meant to do it right there. I don't think he meant to no, do I it. No, I think if, if you watch that replay again, he dropped his shoulders. He thought he'd made a big mistake. If you saw on that replay, he made that catch, and immediately his body language was, uh-oh, I just made a big mistake. But he did not. Watch him. Looks like he'll drop his shoulders. Oh, man, he loves, oh, my goodness, I made a mistake. And, then he, then he realized, oh, I'm okay. That's a good call there by the referee, recognizing that his feet were, in fact, out of bounds when he touched the ball. Great field position, great start here for UConn. We'll see if they get back to running the ball on first down. So the Huskies back on offense, and because of the penalty, the ball is at the 40-yard line. McCombs still in there, no shoemate yet for the Huskies in the offensive backfield. McEntee still in there at quarterback, and the pass is complete to... No, it's dropped. Dropped at the 43. 
threw it to Bucky Jones Jr., a name blast from the past for you longtime Big East fans. Nice play by Trey Wilson there, coming up from the cornerback position. The Ram truck scoring drive, Chris, with six plays, 80 yards, and the 40-yard run by Seymour. And again, a quick strike for Vanderbilt. Nice way to take advantage of some of the big plays there, getting into the end zone on some short drives. I don't ever remember talking about Vanderbilt being an explosive offense. No. Absolutely not. Not with an 11 point lead in the first quarter either. Been a while for that. Second down and 10. McCummings back in there at quarterback and the Wildcat. Nothing doing right there. You saw Walker May in the ball game trying to strip him. And we talked about that with uh, defensive coordinator Bob Shute. They really stressed that a lot in practice. Yeah, they do some drills during practice that emphasize stripping the ball. And one thing that, that he mentioned about a couple of their defensive ends, like May like Fugler is that they actually do a good job of taking that drill and utilizing into the game, trying to create turnovers, trying to strip the ball out, especially after a ball carrier is being held up. That's a perfect time to try to create a turnover by Walker May. Hammer, rake, punch, all the methods that Coach Bob Shoot teaches them to do, and now it's going to be third down and seven. McEntee back in there, quarterback Ryan Griffin, the tight end, will not pick up the first down. Tristan Strong, the linebacker, held on to his foot. Another good play by a young linebacker. We talked about Garnum making a stop on third down to force the field goal when they were inside the red zone. And then UConn comes back here again, completes it to Ryan Griffin. Tristan Strong comes up with a sure tackle to force another punt. Wagner kicking for the Huskies. Cole takes it at the 20-yard line. John Cole to the near side and gets a 10-yard return up to the 30. And so that's where the Commodores will go on play when we start the second quarter. Fantastic first 15 minutes for the Vanderbilt Commodores. Big plays on offense and a strong defense after that opening drive. And the Commodores lead it 14-3 at the end of one. Welcome back, everybody, to Vanderbilt Stadium in Nashville, Tennessee, where Vanderbilt is leading UConn 14 to 3. There was a moment of silence before tonight's game to honor those that lost their lives on 9-11. And unfortunately for Vanderbilt, they lost one of their own, a family member, if you will. Mark Hindy played baseball for the Commodores from 92 to 95. He was in the South Tower as he worked as a trader for Cantor Fitzgerald. They've done a wonderful thing to honor him here at Vanderbilt. There's a plaque in the new stadium, and they've actually got a scra scrap of metal that they made into a cross. It's actually from the World Trade Center, Matt. Thank you, Sandra. Yes, a very somber moment earlier today here at Vanderbilt Stadium, and right in the corner here at Vanderbilt Stadium, the baseball field where he used to play, Hawkins Field. Zach Stacy out of the Wildcat. Second time we've seen them run that formation, and he barely gets back to the line of scrimmage, if at all. Uh, UConn hasn't been affected much by the Wildcat uh, formation tonight with Zach Stacy in there, but I, I bet we'll see some some tricks coming off that, as uh, James Franklin kind of alluded to earlier in the game. Well, very interesting, Chris, in that we haven't seen DJ Shoemate run the ball for UConn, but we haven't seen Warren Norman run the ball for Vanderbilt either. This makes now five quarters that he has not played, did not play against Elon because of a sore knee. Krause in motion, and again, Stacy, and now the reverse. It comes back to Larry Smith. Looking for Matthews, and it's intercepted at the 30-yard line. Or did Matthews wrestle it away? Nope, it is going to be UConn's ball at the 30-yard line, intercepted by Harris Agbor. Incomplete. Now they've ruled it. Okay, now we've had a third decision step in. We had a catch, we had an interception. Now we have an incompletion at the 30-yard line. No doubt the play will be reviewed. This was kind of a poor decision by Larry Smith. A lot of times when you have trick play called, you don't want to you don't want to waste them. But the receiver yeah. was well covered there, double coverage. You saw the ball hit the ground there. Larry Smith probably should have either thrown that one away or taken it on the run himself as Matthews was well covered. You'll see the ball pop out right there. You can see the ball pop out. Agbor, that was a good job by Jordan Matthews. He actually became the defensive back in that situation. Yeah, a lot of times as a, as a wide receiver, you have to play defender on some poorly thrown balls, and Matthews did a good job of breaking that one up. So now third down and 10 here at the 30-yard line. Just underway in the second quarter with Vandy leading UConn 14-3. Heavy run! 
rush. Williams nearly, nearly had Larry Smith, and now he does go down. Juan Martin, the defensive tackle, gets his first sack of the season, dropped Larry Smith. Won't count as a sack, I don't think. Trevardo Williams was the one who came in and really forced Larry Smith out of the pocket. I guess it will go as a sack as the ball's back at the 26. We talked to offensive coordinator John Donovan for Vanderbilt yesterday, and he mentioned to us the number of missed assignments and pressure that brought that was brought to Larry Smith and how they got to shore that up tonight. That time Trevardo Williams came scot-free off the edge. Richard Kent standing at his 11 yard line to kick and kind of off the side of his foot and let's see where they're going to spot this thing and it's a bad spot for Vandy good spot for UConn as they're going to measure it off on the Commodore side of the 50 Huskies at the 47 when we get back. SEC football on CSS is brought to you by Cook's Pest Control. Upgrade your home's termite protection to the unbeatable combination. Cook's Pest Control and Centricon. Call Cook's for free pest and termite evaluation. By USAA, serving the financial needs of the military, veterans, and their families. And by Polaris, the hardest working, smoothest riding off-road vehicle. See them at your local dealer or visit PolarisIndustries.com. 94 seconds into the second quarter, Vandy with a 14-3 lead on UConn, but after a 19-yard punt by Kent, UConn goes on offense at the 45, and the true freshman, Michael Niebrick, now takes over at quarterback for the Huskies, third quarterback we've seen him play already in this ballgame. McCombs. Sniffed out this time. Not much running room for McCombs as he squeezes out a yard at the 44. Kyle Westman making the tackle. Vanderbilt's defense looks energized here early in the game. That first possession that, that UConn had went right down the field. McCombs was averaging about 10 yards a carry, but since that time, the Vanderbilt defense has stiffened. You see the, the front four of Vanderbilt being a little tougher at that point of attack and not a lot of running room for the Huskies at this point. UConn only 35 yards of offense since that opening drive led to their field goal. Second down and 10. Niebrick fakes the handoff. Gunning deep. Looking for Tabucky Jones Jr. It was too far for him. And it's going to be third down. Tabucky Jones Jr. blast from the pass. His dad senior played for Paul Pascaloni at Syracuse. But it's just a matter of coincidence that Pascaloni inherits Junior because Junior was recruited by Randy Edsel. Yeah, kind of hard to believe Tabucky Jones has a son already playing here in college, but uh, Tabucky Jones Junior, a physical wide receiver, a guy that's going to be a good player for UConn. At this point in time, a young guy, only a uh, freshman right now, so he's going to look for some big things from him down the road. Third down and 10, UConn one for four on their third downs to start this game. Niebrick now out of the shotgun. Heavy rush, and it's complete underneath. Jeremy Davis will not get to the stick. Stopped at the 40-yard line. Davis tackled by Tristan Strong and Eric Samuels, and it's going to be fourth down after only a five-yard game. And, Matt, I love what Bob Shoup is doing defensively on third down. He's bringing pressure, making the UConn quarterback have to get the ball out of his hands, and then sure tackling, stopping the, the ball receiver before they're able to get to the sticks. I love that on third down, creating pressure, forcing them to get the ball out of his hands. Wagner on to kick again, standing at his 46. So again, a good stop by Vanderbilt. Ball straight up in the air. Cole calls for a fair catch. Makes it at the 14-yard line. That's where Vandy goes back on offense. 26-yard kick. We take time now for USAA to give a salute to the members of our armed forces. USAA serving the financial needs of the military, veterans, and their families. And a special salute, especially on this weekend when we commemorate the 9-11 tragedy tomorrow. Hard to believe it's been 10 years since 9-11, 2001. But uh, you talk about a, a, a galvanized country. Everybody kind of celebrating the, uh, the memorial here, the way that that brought things together in our country. And really want to thank those folks overseas that are doing their job to defend, defend us here at home. Huey Richardson, Florida Gator, yeah. friend of yours, was actually in the tower. Yeah, he was taking the uh, subway into the towers that morning and happened to be running a little bit late, didn't get in there, and, and uh, was one of the, the people that was lucky enough to avoid having been in the tower when those planes 
struck on uh, September 11th. Yeah, and of course, Sandra Golden already told you the story about former Vanderbilt baseball player Mark Hindy, who was unfortunately in the tower and did not get out. Larry Smith rolling to his right, throwing downfield up for grabs, and it is broken up by the safety, Jerome Jr. Looking for Chris Boyd deep again. Yeah, he's the, uh, the clear choice for the deep ball, and Vanderbilt back at the line here, no huddle again, trying to change the tempo on UConn. Second down and 10 ball at the 15-yard line. Zach Stacy, no running room whatsoever for Stacy. Jory Johnson, the linebacker, was there. Johnson had 11 tackles last week against Fordham. UConn bringing back nine starters off of last year's defense, but the two guys they're replacing are Lawrence Wilson and Scott Lutris, two linebackers that combined for over 90 career starts. Yeah, you look at the strength of this defense, certainly it's the front four, and then the secondary. And it's almost a mirror image of what Vanderbilt has. Their strength is the front and their secondary. Outside of Marv, some young guys that have played well for Vanderbilt so far tonight. Third down and long now for the Commodores. Larry Smith are bringing pressure. He stands in there, fires downfield, was looking for Chris Boyd a yard deep in his end zone. Already number four on Vandy's all-time punt average list. He's had a lot of practice, especially last year. Williams backing up to the 35 to corral this one. Nick Williams scores forward. Flags are out. Pick up an eight on the play up to the 43. We'll check the call. 52-yard boomer off the foot of Kent. Block on the play. And John McDade going to tell us what happened. During the return, like a block in the back. Number 16 on the return team. 10-yard penalty, first down, Connecticut. Timeout. So a timeout on the field. Four minutes and 16 seconds into the second quarter, and Vandy with an 11-point lead. Back at Vanderbilt Stadium in Nashville, Tennessee, SEC football on CSS presented by Regions Bank and Vanderbilt on the strength of two big offensive plays, leading UConn by a score of 14 to three. Huskies back on offense at their own 31, and McEntee back in there at quarterback, and McCombs doing his thing again, got slung forward by Garnum, the linebacker, up close to a first down at the 40-yard line. Coming up on the Sprint Halftime Report, it's our SEC Wired edition with Mississippi State coach Dan Mullen. Man, tough loss for the Bulldogs today. And we'll check in with the college football experts. First half highlights and stats as well. Matt, I'm convinced Auburn's going to win the national title again. <laughs> you don't have the kind of luck they've had in the last two weeks and not win a championship. About two inches from losing, or at least getting that ball game tied up today. Man, whatever Gene Chizik has with that mojo they've got in the last minute, not just this year, they did it last yeah. year too. He needs to bottle that thing and make a billion dollars. Here comes the blitz. They pick it up. No, they don't. They got through with the blitz, and Garnum shot in there and dropped the running back for about a three-yard loss. Best way to shut down the running attack is to penetrate in the backfield there. Several Commodores coming clean, including Garnum, who made the play. Another nice play by the young sophomore, who the coaching staff directly pointed out as one of the guys he wanted to see play more consistently, has done well so far tonight. And that's one of the things that Huskies offensive coordinator George DeLeon told us. He said, we've got to block their blitz and handle the uniqueness of their blitz. Because they're going to bring them and bring them a bunch of different ways. It's third down and three now. It's on the weed now in at tailback. McEntee stands in, throws to the big tight end, got dropped in his tracks by T.J. Greenstone. Fourth down, didn't get to the sticks. Another great play of making the tackle to keep a runner from getting that first down. Let's take a look back at the big tight end, Ryan Griffin, but another sure tackle to force another UConn punt. Wagner on the kick. This should be returnable by Cole. Line drive taken at the 11-yard line. And Cole gets maybe seven on the play, close to the 18-yard. CC Gray. You remember this guy, Alabama Crimson Tide running back Bobby Humphrey. Look at the dude. Rushed for 3,420 yards, caught 60 passes, scored a whopping 40 touchdowns in his career. College football, All-American, and six of the offense. Five-yard penalty, first down. 
So Vanderbilt, second penalty. Backs him up to the 13 yard line. Fourth penalty, I missed two of them. <laughs> Been a quick ball game here, back and forth, all kinds of excitement to this point. So now first and 15, ball back at the 13-yard line. Jerron Seymour, 40-yard touchdown run on his belt already. How about that run? Ran over a defensive back and picked up the first down at the 31. How about Seymour here, wow. the little guy, 5'7". Nothing there, penetration in the backfield, but somehow able to slip through. Get the first down. The coaches talked last week about the true freshman going ahead and using him, even though they got Stacy and Norman on the roster because of his explosiveness, probably the biggest play running back that they have on the roster. We have a man down for Vanderbilt. Looks like a cramp over at the nine yard line. Vandy already playing a man down on offense tonight with J. Bo Burrow out. Enter the ultimate tailgate contest at TexasPeteTailgate.com. Look at all this stuff for this Vanderbilt offense. Larry Smith rolling and throwing and caught by Cole. Could not hang on as he took a shot and landed hard on his back. He's moving. That's a good sign. What knocked out? Uh, he was knocked out there for a minute. You I think, think he hit yeah. his head? John Cole went up high and came down right on the back of his head there. Almost made a great catch. Take a look. Going up, climbing the ladder to get it, but lands right on the back of his head. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Definitely a little bit dazed as oh, he. You're right. He was knocked out up. for at least a moment, it looked like right there, because you could see the kind of the telltale signs of yeah. a guy who loses it for just a second. Now they're checking on him right now. As a receiver, I've had that happen many times, and it's not a good feeling, you know, to come down and wake up and not know exactly what happened. Hopefully that young man's all right. So second down and 10 now. Larry Smith forced out of the pocket by Martin and got rid of it. Twan Martin had him in the grasp. Larry Smith was able to get rid of it. Was looking for Tate, the wide receiver. Wesley Tate, who used to be a running back and now switched to wide receiver. And one of the reasons why they were able to do that is because the kid we've seen here tonight, Gerard Seymour, who's got three carries for 61 yards. Yeah, Tate, we saw him catch a, uh, run a reverse from the receiver position last year for a touchdown. But here, Larry Smith throws it away on second down, third and 10. Vandy just one for four on third down tonight. Their third down yardage to go, 11 and a half yard. Tough to convert with that kind of down and distance. Third down and 10 now from the 31. Heavy rush, quarterback sack Jennings. Big Teddy Jennings stepped in there. First career quarterback sack after the big game last week against Fordham. Jennings come on a little bit of a twist yep. up and under, comes free, and we've seen the Vanderbilt offensive line shuffling guys around a little bit. You see them trying to play about seven or eight different guys in there, just confused in who they were supposed to pass off in the assignment for 98. Yep. Overloaded on 72, Kyle Fisher, the veteran right tackle over there. He couldn't block both of them. Yeah. Took the guy to the outside, took uh, Williams to the outside, and left, left Jennings open with a lane to sack. Smith, now Kent, the punt. And Nick Williams, another boomer. Man, sky high ball on the ground, and Vandy might have it. Scramble for it at the 27. Now no idea who has it. For a moment, look like Vandy on top. And when you get like seven or eight bodies in there, there's just no telling who has it. Not a worse place to be than at the bottom of that pile there. Yeah, UConn comes out of the pile with the ball. We'll wait and see whether he actually had it or not. Tevrin Brandon. And it is going to be UConn's ball, so they dodge a bullet on a 52-yard kick. Great punt right there. You saw the punt returner, Nick Williams, take his eyes off the ball a little bit early. You made a tremendous opportunity for Vanderbilt to get the ball and change field position for him. But somehow, UConn came up with the ball and they'll have first down inside the 30. Chris, what happened in this game? Because UConn yeah. came out all guns a blazing, drove it right down to the 10 yard line, and then Casey Hayward and Rob Moore teamed up to blow up that play, a loss of yardage, and it's really kind of been Vanderbilt momentum ever since. What you've seen is Coach Shoup loading the box. Again, you got a bunch of guys down around the line of scrimmage trying to take away the run. They're not concerned 
with UConn's ability to throw the ball down the field. McEntee, the quarterback, in the pocket. Heavy rush, he goes down at the 23. Got a sack fest going on here the last couple of possessions. John L. Thomas got to the quarterback. Yeah, you watch the pocket around McAtee really collapse there quickly as Vanderbilt's doing a good job bringing six, seven guys in there to create pressure. No respect for the UConn receivers as they're getting manned up on the outside. They've got to be able to complete a pass down the field in order to make UConn drop back some help. Right now, they're putting too many guys up in the box. You see all 11 of Vanderbilt's defenders inside 10 yards of the ball. John L. Thomas had a sack last week against Elon. That gives him two on the year now, or a half more than he had all of last season. Setting up the screen. McCone tripped up. Tristan Strong came out of nowhere to slap those ankles and bring him down. That was a great play call there by offensive coordinator George DeLeon. Little screen to McCombs look like he's, I'm sorry, to uh, McCombs looking for UConn. Third down and nine coming up at the 28. Bob Shute told us he wanted his defensive line to be more disruptive. Two sacks last week, 13 knockdowns. They've got three sacks tonight, so the message was heard. McEntee again, heavy rush, ball out, nearly intercepted at the 43-yard line. Kenny Ladler. Ladner's healthy again. He didn't play much or as much as he's used to last week against Elon coming off an injury, but Bob Shoup said he had a great week of practice, and it shows in his playing time here tonight. Yeah, he's playing well so far this evening. A guy that got a lot of reps last year as a true freshman for Vanderbilt. One of the guys they're depending upon as he's getting better and better to help change the mentality of this program. Krause taking the kick after Cole got shaken up, and Krause from the 22 with some room, and Krause up to the 36. About a 14-yard return there by Jonathan Krause subbing to John Cole. How about Vanderbilt's defense here? Their core values, number one thing they want to do is stop the run. After that first drive, they've really committed to taking away the run from UConn, and right now, very difficult sledding for that UConn offense. How about the presence of Dwight Galt and what he has meant for this program. Galt is the performance director brought here after 27 years on the Maryland staff, a man that James Franklin calls his Yoda. Yeah, most places they call you a strength coach. This guy's the director of performance enhancer. He's a guy that changed the mentality with their off-season workouts, the way that they're getting after it during the spring and the summer. He's the guy that spends the most time with the players during the off-season. He was telling us about when he first got these plays. These guys are tremendous student athletes. It took about 10 minutes to tell them exactly why they were doing everything in each workout. And they've responded well with what they've done here on the field following those workouts. Second down and eight. Pass complete to Lassie. The fullback had a 15-yard touchdown reception last week. And that's a first down catch for Lassie. 14 yards across midfield to the 48. And I tell you what, when we talked to the UConn coaches, they could not stop lavishing praise on Lassie. They, they love this kid. And off, Zach Stacy. Not a lot of running room there for Zach Stacy. Lassing's a guy that was a former tight end in this former offense that they used to run. There was no such thing as a fullback, so they had to move Lassing from tight end to the fullback spot. And you see him lining up here at the tight end position with Barton being out of the game. Lassing's kind of a jack of all trades. Did that in high school, too. Lots of time right here for Larry Smith, and he gets down to avoid getting clobbered by Ray Wilson, the cornerback, as he gets the ball to the 42-yard line, down to close to four minutes left here in the first half of Vanderbilt, 14 to 4 in the lead. That's something Larry Smith didn't do last year. You saw him trying to take tacklers on. He's a big, strong, physical guy, but sometimes it's better to get down and not take those extra, extra hits as he has in the past. Larry Smith down to the 36-yard line and a first down. Troy Johnson making the tackle. Watch the zone read here. He's looking at that defensive end on the left. He collapses on the running back. Larry Smith does a good job of reading it and keeping it to get up for the first down. First and 10, ball at the 36. Bandy moving again, close to three and a half to play in the half. They go back the other way, flags out, Krause drops the ball. Not enough men on the line of scrimmage there as both receivers on the top side were in the backfield. Look at formation on the offense. Five men in the backfield. Five yard penalty, first down. One of those stupid penalties that you 
James Franklin said they did a good job of eliminating it last week, but just got to be aware there has to be an eligible receiver on the end of the line of scrimmage, and that time both receivers in the Twins formation were in the backfield. So now first and 15 at the 41. Seymour gets it back to the original line of scrimmage. The 36, five-yard pickup. Yawin Smallwood making the tackle for the Husky. Smallwood, another one of those guys, stepped into a starting role this year after projected starting middle linebacker, fourth-year junior Jerome Williams was hurt during the spring. Smallwood playing with one shoe out there right now. Larry Smith on the keeper. Larry Smith on the keeper. UConn drops him for a three-yard loss. Tory Johnson was in on that tackle as well, and so was John Martin. Martin's been all over the place. Tough with the no huddle there. Smallwood lost the shoe, had to stay in because of the pace of the That's Vanderbilt the offense. He's able to get off the field now for a substitution, but they've done a good job of, again, changing the tempo, trying to keep UConn off guard. Eighth play of the Vanderbilt drive, their first drive of more than six plays in this ball game. Nice open field tackle by Jory Johnson again, complete. dropping Jermaine Seymour at the 39, and now it's fourth down. It's by Jory Johnson. It's fourth and long. Does James Franklin do something here? Remember, he went for it three times on fourth down last week and was successful all three times. Yeah, good job last week. All three of those fourth down conversions led to points. But I think right here, you're up 14 to three. You got an opportunity to pin UConn deep. I don't think there's any reason to take any chances and give UConn a cheap touchdown before the end of the half. Vanderbilt fans, CSS brings you SEC and Vanderbilt coverage all season with Vandy replays Sundays at 4 Eastern, fast-paced discussion on Mondays at 6.30 Eastern on College Football Fix and in-depth analysis on Talking SEC Football Wednesdays at 6.30. You can hit the website, css-sports.com for details. Mandy will take a delay of game penalty here, give uh, Kent, their punter, a little bit more room to operate as they try to pin UConn deep. Now inside the final two minutes of this first half. It's going to be fourth and 18 from the 44-yard line. Richard Kent on the punt. Back to receive for UConn, number 31, Nick Williams. So Kent standing back at his 41-yard line. Nick Williams again deep at the 10. Heavy rush, Kent. High kick angling toward the outside corner. Hits at the 19, bounces backwards, so UConn comes out of that thing fairly well as they'll take over at the 20-yard line with 128 to play here in the first half. What Not a whole lot of offense for UConn since that opening drive. I was going to say they went right down the field on their first possession, running the ball at will, but since that time, a great adjustment by Bob Shoup as he's taken away that run by loading the box and great execution. You see a lot more energy on the defensive side for Vanderbilt than you did on their first drive to start the game. Only 44 yards of offense for the Huskies the since that opening drive resulted in the field goal. You have to be able to throw the football. When you're one-dimensional, it's easy for teams to load up and take one of those things away from you. They're going to have to complete some passes down the field. We'll see if they try to do that here before the end of the first half. A lot of Johnny McEntee at quarterback so far in this first half. Just one series for Niebrick, and McCummings has gotten in there a couple of times as a Wildcat as the ball goes through the hands of Lyle McCombs. Incomplete second and 10 coming up. Arkansas tonight in action. They're playing in Little Rock tonight, having no problems whatsoever with New Mexico. 31 to 3 the lead for the 14th ranked Razorbacks. And you and I, Maria Taylor, will be in Fayetteville next uh, Saturday night as Arkansas plays host to Troy. Yeah, looking forward to watching Bobby Petrino's offense. They've done a good job with Tyler Wilson and replacing Ryan Mallett, putting up some big points already tonight. And we'll see if they can do it next week against Troy. Second down and 10. McEntee steps up, flags are out through the hands of Nick Williams, the intended receiver at the 40-yard line. And now it's going to be third down. Personal foul. Legal hands to the face of number 84 of the defense. This is a 15-yard penalty with our automatic first down. Rob Lohr with the infraction. That bails out UConn because they were going nowhere. They were facing third and 10. Take a look at uh, Lohr with the hands to the face up towards the top of your screen. Adam Masters, the right guard. From its own 37-yard line. Six fouls now, six penalties for 
Vanderbilt. Underneath. Wow, nice hit. Nice catch by Jeremy Davis to hold on to it. Chris Marv with the hit. And now it's going to be second down. UConn quickly to the line of scrimmage. Here's what it sounds like. Here's what it sounded like down on the field level. McCombs, another big hit. Ball out and incomplete. Richardson came up from the safety position to hit McCombs. Poor pass to him. He had to wait on it. And then he took punishment for it. You mentioned earlier about uh, offensive coordinator George DeLeon's comments to us about how hard Vanderbilt's defense came last week against Elon. They're doing the same thing tonight. You saw Chris Marv with the big hit before. Hayward playing physically earlier in the game. Kind of that mentality that spread throughout the entire U uh, Vanderbilt defense. UConn one for seven on third downs. No first downs since that opening drive. Other than the one that they picked up on the penalty right here. McEntee steps up. Throwing off the back foot, up for grabs, and it is caught by Tabucky Jones Jr. What a catch at the 42-yard line. Nice catch there, but very dangerous pass as Vanderbilt dropping eight into coverage. Not a big hole there, but Tabucky Jones Jr. goes up and makes a big catch. 43 seconds. Again, wide open. McCombs dropped it. Now that's a play that UConn can ill afford to not take advantage of. They had McCombs wide open on the wheel route. McAtee just threw it behind him with a high hard one. Tough catch for anybody, but especially a running back trying to get down the sideline. Very difficult to adjust in that position. Second down and still no DJ Shoemate. Shoemate supposedly was healthy 100% and ready to go. We have not seen him whatsoever in this ballgame. Second down and 10. 37 seconds to play in the half. Ball at the 42. McIntyre fires and intercepted and dropped at the 31-yard line. Marv could not believe his hands right there. You look at McIntyre staring it down all the way. Marv did a good job of reading it, stepping in front. Probably could have taken that one to the house with nobody in front of him but green, green grass. Chris Marv. Shows you why he's playing linebacker. He uses those hands for tackles, not, not interceptions. Not, not trying to catch the football. Over 312 career tackles, which is the most of any active player in the Southeastern Conference. It's third down and 10 now, with 32 seconds left in the half. McEntee intercepted this time at the 25-yard line. Javon Marshall brings it across midfield at the 45-yard line, and Vandy will have 22 seconds to work with. Matt, you saw McAtee two times in a row stare down his receiver the entire way. Took Marshall right to the ball, and the ball was behind tight end Ryan Griffin. Nice play by Marshall, the sophomore, to get a turnover and set up you, uh, Vanderbilt with a chance to score here before the half. Chris Dory, this is the fourth consecutive Vanderbilt game we called on yeah. the SEC on CSS. The last two last season, the first two this season. This is a different looking Vanderbilt team. No doubt about it. As we talked about in the open, very opportunistic here with the turnovers to points. Let's see if they can convert before the half. Ball is at the 43. Larry Smith given all kinds of time. Pressure from the backside, and he's dropped by C.O. Moore, the linebacker, at the 48-yard line. C.O. Moore, the only returning linebacker for the UConn Huskies this season, came unblocked from the backside. That's a whiff by Zach Stacy on the edge. You got to take on blitzing linebackers up high. When you try to go low like that at the line of scrimmage, you got too much room to avoid. You saw more jump right over that cut attempt by Stacy and knock Larry Smith down when they had some receivers. They tried to take a shot down the field. They had some opportunity there, but Larry Smith did not see more coming free from the back side. UConn with four sacks today. Both these uh, defenses have been getting after the quarterback. And when they don't get the sack, they're getting the hits on them. And they're definitely planting a seed in both of these quarterbacks' heads that the defenses are coming after them tonight. Collapsed the pocket there earlier on McEntee. And there, Moore came free to knock Larry Smith from the blind side. 
Second down and 15. UConn showing blitz with their linebacker, Smallwood. Now they step out of it. 16 seconds left in the half. Plenty of time left on the play clock for Larry Smith. Pocket stands up for him. Fires and nearly intercepted. Gleedy Ray Wilson nearly had the pick at the 32-yard line. And I think it goes back to the pressure. I mean, the, the pressure the quarterbacks have taken. Now all of a sudden you see passes that aren't so accurate anymore. Yeah, trying to get rid of the ball maybe before they're ready to, to, to throw the football because of some of that pressure that we've had here during the second quarter. But Vanderbilt's been very fortunate. They haven't turned the ball over yet this game. But some throws there as that one was errant. Had a chance to be intercepted but uh, dropped by the UConn defender. Ten seconds left in the half. Andy needs to be careful here to be sure that they don't give UConn anything cheap late. Ball is going to be intercepted by Ray Wilson at the 25-yard line. He was trying to throw that thing away, and now that's going to be the end of the first half. So Larry Smith trying to throw that thing away, and now Larry Smith is slow getting up. He took a pounding in that first half, and he's kind of lopsided as he's walking his way to the locker room right now. James Franklin not happy with the way that Vanderbilt finished off the first half here, urging his guys to get to the locker room after such a good first 20 minutes of the half. They kind of faded down the stretch here. We'll see if he can re-energize re them in the locker room at halftime. Well, the story for Vanderbilt offensively, two big plays, a 42-yard touchdown pass from Larry Smith to Chris Boyd, a 40-yard touchdown run to or by Jerron Seymour, and that's been the difference in the half. Let's go down to Sandra Golden with Paul Pascaloni. Thanks, guys. Uh, Coach, uh, missed opportunities and mistakes. How frustrating is that for you? Yeah, it's pretty frustrating. Uh, the turnover, the sudden change, big play. We got caught with 12 guys on the field. They can get lined up. They scored on that one. We're struggling on third down offensively. We got to get third down straightened out. Uh, if we can make a few third downs, then we're going to have the ball in position to uh, to get some points. Is that fast tempo offense uh, kind of a big surprise? Well, it's not a bit. We're prepared for it. It's just when they substitute, when we try to substitute, uh, you got to be careful what you're doing. Thanks, Coach. Yep. Matt. Thank you, Sandra. Paul Pascaloni with a victory tonight would become the Big East coaching leader in wins. But right now, the Huskies trail 14 to three. Sprint halftime report coming up next. Back in the Music City, started the second half in Nashville. Beautiful skyline here as Vanderbilt leads Connecticut 14 to three. Send it down now to Sandra Golden and Vandy head coach James Franklin for our principal edge to the game. Hey, uh, tell me what you told the kids at the half. No, just the biggest thing is we've got to be more consistent on all three phases of the, of the team. You know, offensively, we're either having a big play or going three and out. So we've got to be more consistent. Defensively, I think we settled down, did a good job of second quarter. Tell me what happened when they went running out on the field, and I saw you kind of flip a lid a little bit. Well, it's just, you know, we made a big play. We had a bunch of guys out in the field celebrating. That's not how we're going to play football around here. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. Guys. Thank you, Sandra. Vanderbilt with an 11-point lead, trying to win consecutive games. It's hard to believe that this is true, but it really is. Hard to believe trying to win consecutive games for the first time since 2008 when they won the last two games of that 5-0 start, Ole Miss and Auburn. They went on to a bowl game that year and won a bowl game for the first time since 1955. Shows you how important it is to get off to a good start to a season. Yeah, I mean, it was very difficult last year, what they've gone through the last two seasons and two and ten records in each of those years. But the mentality's changed here. It's hard not to believe in what James Franklin's been selling. Prior to the season last week, you saw some more momentum game with that win over Elon. But tonight, I've been very impressed in the first half. This is a quality Big East opponent in UConn, and Vanderbilt, with the exception of that first drive, has really controlled the rest of the first half. Chad Kristen kicking off, and Samuel will take it at the goal line. Samuel right up the middle. Samuel's up to the 22-yard line, and that's where Mandy goes on offense for the first time here in the second half. We'll see. Larry Smith was really beat up a lot in that first half, took a lot of hits, four sacks, and many more hits on top of that for that UConn defense, and really getting a lot of pressure from that front four, generating most of that pressure from those front four. Yeah, UConn did a good job of making Larry Smith feel uncomfortable in the pocket there later into the second quarter. The big key that I think what's happened here is third down, the lack of consistency that James Franklin talked about at the break there was that they haven't been able to do anything to keep drives going. Just two of eight on third down to this point in the first half. We'll keep an eye on Brandon Barden. He came out of the ball game in that first half, and so did John Cole. 
And Zach Stacy, no running room whatsoever. Kendall Reyes, who is their all Big East first team defensive tackle, making the stop for a big loss on first down. When we talked to defensive coordinator Don Brown on Wednesday, he said number 99, Kendall Reyes, is an absolute real deal, a monster there. And you saw him penetrate, making the play in the backfield on Zach Stacy. And again, he said, I'd be lying if I didn't tell you. I don't feel solid about my defensive tackle. You got to feel good about those tackles. And then the ends, Teddy Jennings and Travarta Williams has played well tonight as, as well. The experience of this UConn defense is up front. Over 90 career starts from those guys up front. Coles in the ball game makes the grab at the 26 yard line. Remember, he took a hard hit to the noggin on a pass attempt early in the ball game, but he's okay apparently. Yeah, nice play by John Cole there. Smith fitting it in a tight window to the inside slant as the linebacker tried to buzz outside there. Maybe got away with one as that uh, certainly was a, a well-contested play by the UConn defense. Larry Smith now with 112 yards passing in this ball game. That moves him into 10th on Vandy's all-time passing list ahead of McKenzie Adams. Third down now and six. Heavy pressure, throwing and up in the air and intercepted. Jory Johnson inside the 20, down to the 17, and a flag out on the play as well. And again, I think it was UConn pressure that forced that turnover. Through the offense. Turnover stands. Yep, it's going the through. The foul is declined. The interception, first down Connecticut. Well, bad start for Vandy. Good start for UConn here in the third quarter. Take a look here as Johnson drops back in the middle and the deflection. Ends up right in his hands. A great turn of events for UConn. Great way to start the half with field position in the red zone. First really good thing that's happened, but you got to feel like if you continue to bring pressure on the quarterback, eventually things are going to crack. Well, they confused Larry Smith there. They brought some pressure and then dropped a defensive lineman back into coverage. The deflection there falling right into Johnson's hands, but really a good job by the defensive coordinator, Don Brown, and confusing Larry Smith. Great opportunity for the Huskies to dig into the Commodores' lead right here. McCombs right into the teeth of that Vandy defense. Very little running room on that play right there. Chris Marv, the linebacker, making the stop for Vanderbilt. Hard to believe this is the same defense that we saw on the first drive of the game as UConn pretty much gashed them, had their way with the front seven of Vanderbilt. But they've done a good job of coming back, filling the gaps, playing assignment sound with their gap control and really have, have done a good job of plugging up the hole. McCombs has not had the kind of room to run as he did on the first drive. Double tight ends here for UConn. Only one wide out. And McCombs gets the handoff again. Big hole for McCombs! Inside the five and down to the three. Garnum saved him from scoring the touchback. You can tell that UConn is making a concerted effort to get the ball back in McCombs' hands as he makes a nice cut back and press the hole, cut up the middle, gain some big yardage. But on that first drive of the game, he touched the ball seven times. The rest of the whole half, he only carried it six times. So you can see that they're making a concerted effort to make sure they get the ball into his hands. McCombs, a healthy 6.3 yards per carry. He will check out of the ball game. Jonathan Zonlui, a little bit bigger back at 6 foot 207, will check in. Still no shoemaker. And McCummings in there at quarterback as well. He might keep it, he does, and pushes inside the three down to the two. Cummings is a great change of pace kind of quarterback from what you see. Obviously, McCummings is the, is the more athletic guy. McEntee's the better drop back passer, knows the offense, can audible well, get them to the right play. But I don't think, regardless of who they settled in on the quarterback position, whether it's Niebrick, McEntee, or McCummings, I think you'll see some sort of wildcat packs with McCummings throughout the rest of the season. McCummings is going to play. Now, whether it's as a starter or as a change of pace, like you just said, he's going to stay in the rotation. He stays in the ball game right here on second down and goal from two. He's from Natick. Massachusetts played the same high school as Doug Flutie. McCombs tripped up. Moore got him back at the seven. Man, that's just tremendous effort by Lohr there. Penetration in the backfield. Nice job by the Vanderbilt front four of creating some disruption in the backfield. Lohr relentless in trying to get to McCombs. 
Yeah, Lohr shoots as just a legit great athlete. Showed his great athleticism right there. Cat like quicks to burst through that offensive line and drop a combs back at the six. Now it's third down and goal. Two for nine, the Huskies. On thirds this evening, McEntee back in there, quarterback. Confusion with the alignment there. Forced the penalty. Delay game wow. on the offense. Five-yard penalty, third down. Do you think that has anything to do with the fact that you're running kind of a quarterback shuttle there? Well, I think it's difficult sometimes to get into a rhythm when you're trying to, to move guys in there and, and play to their strengths. Obviously, the, the receivers thought that the alignment was to the left, both of them out of position, but certainly some, some confusion in what was going on uh, out of the huddle. Well, we don't have to say it. Their offensive coordinator said it, George DeLeon, who said, when you have three quarterbacks, that sometimes means you don't have a quarterback. And they're about to get another delay penalty here. Late getting onto the field. First charge time out of the half, Connecticut. Play clock was down to four seconds there. No excuse for not getting that one into the game a little bit quicker. So obviously, a little bit of uh, confusion on the UConn sideline. Well, Paul Pascaloni said he wants a guy that can move the chains, make plays, and be clutch and score points at quarterback. Four minutes, 50 seconds into the third quarter. Vandy leading UConn 14 to three, but the Huskies with a chance to score following a Vandy turnover, but now it's third and goal from the 11. McEntee in their quarterback after the timeout, throwing off his back foot up for grabs and batted down. Chris Marv, I believe, batted it down in the back of the end zone, and now it's gonna be fourth down. That's a terrible decision right there by McEntee. They tried to run the pump to the tight end and hit him back of the end zone, but plenty of coverage. Nobody really went for the fake, and that easily could have been intercepted by Chris Marv in the back of the end zone. Taggart is on for his second field goal attempt. He hit his school record 53rd earlier in the ball game. Didn't break the record, he already broken the record. This adds to his school record total. He now has 54 in his career, and it cuts the Vanderbilt lead to eight. Got to give Vanderbilt's defense a lot of credit right there. The ball was turned over inside the 20. Another example of bending but not breaking. Two times they've been down inside the 20. Both times UConn's had to settle for field goals. So a lot of credit there to the Vandy defense for holding them out both times. Time now for our USPS trivia for tonight's game. Brought to you by the U.S. Postal Service. Here is your question. Vanderbilt's eight wins in 1982 were their most since 1955 and hasn't been matched since. Not the form of the question, but that is a statement. And the man who was coaching that team in 1982, the legendary George McIntyre, who is now battling MS, and we certainly pull for him in his fight against that horrible disease. He was honored here at halftime this evening. It was 30 years ago, this very day, that George McIntyre led Vanderbilt to a 23-17 victory over Maryland, christening the new Vanderbilt Stadium. Number of his players, some of the all-time greats, Whit Taylor, the quarterback, uh, here to honor their former coach this evening. Samuels will take the kick from the goal line, maybe a yard deep in it. Coming to the near side and up to the 23-yard line, Eric Samuels will put the Vandy offense in play with that kick return right there. Time now for the Ram Trucks scoring drive. Six plays, only six yards after the interception set them up for potentially a touchdown. But once again, the Vanderbilt defense buckled and held it to three. That statistic's a little bit misleading there because they got down to the two-yard line, but after going in reverse, thanks to the, the play by Rob Lohr stopping McCombs in the backfield and then the delay game penalty took them out of great scoring opportunity in terms of a touchdown. So did not take advantage of what the offense or what the defense set them up for. So first and 10, ball is at the 24 yard line. And the keeper, Larry Smith, nothing doing on that play. Vandy, zero turnovers, their first 85 plays this season, but two turnovers in the last five final. plays. Legal block below the waist, number 17 of the offense. Penalties half the distance to the goal line. 
first down. And Chris, some of the old sins that we've seen from Vanderbilt in the past now starting to rear their ugly head. Well, as a receiver, you can't come down inside and cut somebody that's inside of you without getting head up. That time you saw Krause try to come in and cut the corner after he was playing hard inside. That's a, a tough penalty right there, setting them back with another negative play. UConn, seven tackles for loss in this game. Bandy, seven penalties for 50 yards. And now, Jordan Rogers, the brother of Aaron Rogers, in at quarterback, came in, subbed in for Larry Smith last week when he was hurt. Don't know if this is an injury type situation right here, but Rogers in the ball game, swings it out there to Jerron Seymour. And nothing doing on that play either. Jordan had a big debut, stepped in off the bench after Larry Smith got hurt, and on his very first collegiate snap at Vanderbilt, fired a 30-yard laser for a touchdown. Let's check in with Sandra Golden. Well, Coach Paul Pasqualini was, you know, asking about these three quarterbacks and the three-headed quarterback, and someone asked him, who's your perfect prototype for a quarterback? And guess who he answered? Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> well, Aaron's not playing in this ball game. Lit up the Saints, though, the Looked other good, night. Good, didn't he, on Thursday? And then took a shot at the media, too, about those off-season workouts the Packers didn't bother to hold. Didn't seem to slow him down any. Rodgers got slowed down there by the UConn defense. And Vandy going in reverse now on offense. And a big reason why is the UConn defense. Yeah, that's another big play by Teddy Jennings. We talked about him earlier stepping in last week for Jesse Joseph. Had a great game against Fordham and has done well tonight again. Another play in the backfield. He's been quite disruptive as the rest of that defensive line for UConn has been here tonight. Now it's third down and 24. Jennings has a couple of sacks in this ball game. Blitz coming. Ball batted up in the air and nearly intercepted. Jordan Rogers saved the ball from being intercepted in the end zone for an immediate pick six. That's a tremendous play by Jordan Rogers, something you won't see in the stat sheet, but easily could have been six points for UConn had he not had the wherewithal to knock it away, play a little bit of defense there. Saved the day for the Commodores. You talk about making a bad play and then redeeming yourself immediately with a great one. That's what Jordan Rodgers just did. Now, Bandy has to kick out of their own end zone. Jerome Jr. came on the safety blitz, nearly popped the ball up in the air for a quick pick six. As it is, the Huskies still should get great field position out of this. And he rushed, ball blocked, touchdown, UConn. Well, there you go. I said it just a few moments ago. You keep bringing pressure, and eventually it's going to crack the opposition. Byron Jones recovers in the end zone for the touchdown. You mentioned earlier Vanderbilt falling into some of their old ways. We've seen negative penalties on both sides of the ball, and then you can't cover what you don't protect. That's what they talk about all the time on the punt team. A lot of times you're anxious to get down the field and cover the punt. You can't cover what you don't protect first and Vanderbilt giving up a touchdown on special teams. How about that move by Byron Jones? He blocked the kick and then recovered the kick. And UConn suddenly is within a point. Ten quick points for the Huskies as they turn this game around with defense and special teams play. by Ram Trucks. Guts. Glory. Ram. And a lot of guts and glory for UConn here in a short amount of time after the Taggart field goal. Just moments later, the block punt recovered in the end zone by Byron Jones. And just like that, the Huskies are down only one. And James Franklin and the Commodores searching for answers. Mandy has done nothing offensively. Zero yards this half. In fact, they've gone in reverse. One penalty for 10 yards, done nothing. They have got to get something going here on offense, if for nothing else than to change field position and take a little bit of this momentum away from UConn. Samuels from the goal line. They run a reverse, or fake it at least. Tate, oh, is a bad idea, too. Samuels in trouble way back at the 12-yard line. Things going from bad to worse for the Commodores as the Huskies 
shove out of bounds. Let's see if there's a flag. No flags come out down there. So how do the Commodores handle this adversity? Let's check in with Sandra Golden. Well, Matt and Chris, uh, Coach Franklin told us yesterday, you noticed during the Elon game when one little thing would go wrong, the body language of the entire team would change and their heads were down. They just weren't walking with the walk anymore. Well, all of a sudden, right before the, uh, the touchdown for UConn, I said to our producer, wow, what a difference in the sideline. The body language has completely changed. This is when he says the team's got to show who they're, what they're made of, dealing with adversity. We'll see how they handle that adversity because it's piling up in big heaps right now. Larry Smith back in there at quarterback. Jerron Seymour, who gave them some electricity in the first half, gets stopped right there at the Atlanta scrimmage. And I tell you what, it's very evident, Chris Doring, that the massive defensive and experienced defensive line for the uh, Huskies has taken over the Yeah, they do a good job of uh, penetrating now, not allowing any running lanes for Vanderbilt as they go back to the no huddle, try to change things up. Teron Seymour, very little running room. Lanes get shut down. Seal Moore, the linebacker, was the guy at the end of the stop there on the move. Seymour, Seal Moore, stops Seymour, and now it's going to be third down and seven, ball the 15. Vandy can't afford a three and out here because the momentum has weighed heavily on the Husky side. Heavy rush again, ball batted down, trying to get there to Kraus. And again, heavy pressure coming from that backside on Larry Smith, and he takes another beat. Tough to convert third and longs. Vanderbilt has been very poor tonight with their three and out. Six times they've gone three and out. They're trying to convert third and longs every time, and it's very difficult as you see UConn stacking the box in there, playing one-on-one, -on -one, daring them to try to beat them on the outside, which they haven't been able to do. So now fourth down and seven. Once again, Kent backed up towards his own end zone, punting right from the goal line with Nick Williams standing deep for the Huskies back at his 42. Low snap, heavy, or little rush, I should say, this time, and a booming kick. Williams having to go back. Oh, bad decision by Williams to let that thing hit the dirt. Hit the grass, hit the field, you know what I mean? It rolled 10, 15 yards inside that 20-yard line, and the Huskies are pinned deep in their own territory. Matt, tonight, 14-13 lead for Vanderbilt, but it's been all about the big plays after the turnover. Larry Smith deep to Boyd for the touchdown. And then the big run by Jerron Seymour, a 40-yard touchdown run. Vanderbilt only 53 yards on the ground tonight, 40 of them there. UConn gets back in the ball game with a big block punt for the touchdown. But other than those plays, really not a whole lot of offensive consistency from either team. You get the feeling, Chris Story, that if that Bandy's just holding on for dear life right now. The momentum all in favor of the Huskies as they go on offense at the 18-yard line. And they've gotten back in the ballgame without generating much offense themselves as McCombs on the carry gets up to the 25-yard line. Earlier in the ballgame, it was the defense that stemmed that momentum and brought it back into their favor. We'll see if Vanderbilt's defense can do it again here. They need to get a stop. They need to get off the field and change the field position. This entire half has been played down with Vanderbilt's offense backed up at their own goal line. They need a stop here to flip that field position. McCombs pushing 100 yards rushing for the ball game, and that should give it to him right there. Scoots to the outside and fell awkwardly out of bounds at the 34-yard line. He goes north of 100 now in that nine-yard game. How about an opening two games for Lyle McCombs, 141 last week against Fordham, and now he's at 106 tonight against Vandy. Continue to give him the ball here in the second half. He's churning away, picking up yards. They'll be big as they go into the fourth quarter if they're able to continue to control the line of scrimmage as they have so far. We expected to see Shoemate, his running mate, and he has not played. Archie Barnes stops McCombs that time at the 35-yard line. But, you know, UConn's had a pretty strong history of, uh, of stout running backs, and the transition from Randy Edsel to Paul Pascaloni has been almost seamless. Both coaches very similar in their philosophy. You had Donald Brown, you had Jordan Todman, and now it looks like you got a good one here in McComb. Yeah, overall, their philosophy very similar. The guys have coached together in the past with Syracuse, and you mentioned Shoemate. He's in the ball game for the first time tonight now. Nothing doing there for McCombs. 
Lost yardage on that one. Casey Hayward, first time we've called Casey Hayward's name tonight. That's because he really hasn't been challenged in the passing game. Take a look, it was actually McCombs that was in the ball game, not Shoemate, but a good job of the Vanderbilt defense. Stringing that out to the sideline. Hayward, the cornerback, coming up, making a big stop to fourth third down. Yeah, Shoemate must still be favoring be that hurt. ankle yeah. because the next guy in is Jonathan Zon louis who's back in there now. He comes in in these pass situations, a little bit bigger back and can block, play some pass pro. McEntee throws to the far side. It is complete. Nice catch by Kashif Moore after he got upended by Trey Wilson. That's a big time play there. Being able to concentrate with a guy taking your feet out from under you. That's a long throw too. That's a long throw, but let's give credit to the backs there. You talked about John Louis being able to pass protect, being a bigger guy. Vanderbilt brought pressure. The backs picked it up, allowed McAtee to have some time, and he was able to deliver a strike out there across the wide side of the field to Kashif Moore. First and 10, ball at the 48 now. McCummings in there, quarterback, and he got hammered. Fugger came in unblocked and leveled him. That's the fear you run there when you run the naked bootleg. You're leaving the end open there, hoping he's going to crash down on the run fake. That time, Fugger did a great job of staying home. McKenzie didn't even see him coming. Second sack of the ball game for the Vanderbilt Commodores. Fugger, his second sack of the season. Had one against Elon last week. Second down and long now. McEntee back in there. Quarterback, there's pressure from Fugger again. Matt, you mentioned earlier the drill that this Vanderbilt defense goes through every day in practice. And Fugger, one of the best at the strip drill, coming off the edge, breaking that him. ball, very nearly got it out. McAtee did a good job of securing it, or else it would have been a big time play there for Fugger. Nonetheless, third and forever for UConn. So after the big pass completion to Kashif Moore, consecutive sacks by Tim Fugger for minus 10 yards. Third and 20. Bandy showing blitz with Marv and Strong stepping up, now backing out. Dropping for pass coverage and dropped by Kashif Moore. I know Chris Doring, you as a star wide receiver, just cringe when you see that happen. Uh, you hate seeing drop passes, although I don't know if Moore would have caught that pass. It would have been enough for a first down or not. But we talked about the momentum and somebody needing to get the, the momentum back on the Vanderbilt sideline. Good job by that defense right there, creating two big sacks by Fugger, and now UConn punting back to, to Vanderbilt. Wagner to kick. Short kick, Cole back in there to take this one, and fields the ball down on one knee, actually both knees. And that's where Vandy takes over at the 30-yard line, down to our final two minutes of this third quarter. Look at the UConn defense tonight. Eight tackles for loss, four sacks, two picks, one block punt that resulted in a touchdown. And we talked earlier in the week to John Donovan, the offensive coordinator. As we mentioned in the open, both Coach Franklin and Donovan work with defensive coordinator Don Brown at Maryland last year. They know each other very well. They talked about the way that he likes to load the box, the way that he likes to bring pressure. And we've seen all of that from Don Brown tonight with that UConn defense. They've done a great job of pretty much bottling up uh, Vanderbilt's offense. Zach Stacy running Wildcat, hands off to Prowse on the speed sweep, and they pick up four, maybe five on the play, depending upon that spot. Prowse on the carry, stopped by Jerome Jr. Second down coming up. Bandy 10, 8, and 1 all time against the Big East. One and one in their series against the Huskies. They beat him. They beat the Huskies back in 02, first year that UConn went D1. Jay Cutler was their quarterback then. Larry Smith back in there, quarterback. Slings it out there to Wesley Tate. Tate lunges forward to the 37 yard line. Yawin Smallwood, the Mike linebacker, making the stop. And it's third down. Diamond formation up to the top. They tried to overload and flood the left side of the field and uh, UConn did a great job of penetrating and shedding off the block, forcing third down for Vanderbilt. Of course, a year ago, Rensselaer Field 
UConn, the winner, scored 26 unanswered points after falling behind 21-14 to win it 40-21. Halfback pass back to Larry Smith, and he dropped the ball! Here's the surprise that James Franklin talked about to us before the game. Zach Stacy has Larry Smith wide open. Got the first down. He's thinking about scoring and doesn't secure the catch. Mm. That's the big play that you have to make. Vanderbilt was doing that earlier in the first half. Every time they had an opportunity for a big play, they took advantage of it. That one there, they let get away. Fourth down, now Vandy has to kick. UConn breathes a big sigh of relief because Larry Smith had a big gainer, if not six, written all over that one. Kent, line drive kick. Nick Williams lets it hit in front of him, and it will roll dead at the 17-yard line. All your favorite sports, all your favorite teams. Find them on CSS with a full lineup. Live football, basketball, baseball, and more. You don't want to miss out. If you don't have CSS, contact your local cable provider today. And also like to welcome all those watching on SNY tonight and on ESPN3 as well. 14-13, Tim Fugger. Big defensive possession last time for the Commodores. Big series, I should say. Yeah, he single-handedly kind of changed the momentum in that ball game. Fugger left open on the boot like the first time and then just beat the double team off the edge to get to McKinty. Pretty good job by the, the young man who has a knack for creating turnovers, has a knack for plays behind the line of scrimmage, has been very athletic and very good at that over the last three years here at Vanderbilt. Well, Vanderbilt with a personal foul on that uh, play. So a 15-yard mark off from the spot of uh, the dead ball there at the 17-yard line. So at the 32 now for the Huskies as we are now inside the final minute of this third quarter. Bandy hops into SEC action next week. They've got an early morning game, an 11-20 central start against Ole Miss. UConn will be back home against Iowa State next week. Their Big East opener doesn't come until October 8th against West Virginia. Huskies pick to finish sixth in the Big East this year after winning it last year. The Mountaineers pick to win the conference. McCombs, Marv, two-yard game. Darnham helped out on that tackle. Stopped by Chris Marv. Bob Shoup, the defensive coordinator, ha could not speak enough to the strengths of Chris Marv. Having a guy like Marv on the team, he said he's only coached five or six guys that have had the innate ability to read and recognize the way that Marv does. He's a sideline to sideline player, a tremendous leader. As you mentioned, the all-time active leader in the SEC in career tackles with over, what, 312? Yep. He's added to that tonight already. A big time player that really has anchored this defense for three years. Six tackles tonight, two pass breakups. McEntee stands in, fires, got his tight end open, and Ryan Griffin hauls in a big catch at the 39-yard line. I'll tell you what, Paul Pascaloni coached tight ends for the Dallas Cowboys, had Jason Witt there. Yeah. He's not saying Ryan Griffin's Jason Witten, but says he's pretty good. He is a very good receiver there. That's a great play. That is play. the end of the third quarter. By John McEntee there, standing in, delivering it down the middle. Ryan Griffin, little cover two man, beat the man underneath. That's a big play for UConn. Defense has dominated this game the last two quarters. Bandy holding on to a one point lead as we head to the fourth. Back in the Music City, Vanderbilt trying to go 2-0 for the first time since 2008, leading the reigning Big East champion, UConn Huskies, 14-13. As we go to the fourth quarter, Matt Stewart, Chris Doring, Sandra Golden with you at Vanderbilt Stadium. Huskies first and 10 from the Bandy 37. Lyle McCombs brought down by Tristan Strong, and a flag comes in late from way back. Is that a horse collar? I don't know if it was a horse collar or a face mask. You could definitely see his neck jerk back quickly. Look, does look like it was a horse collar. Not sure if they're going to call it or not. There's no foul for a horse collar tackle. 
Second down. So they wave it off. The flag came in from way behind. There were a lot of officials a lot closer to it. Line judge was right there, didn't drop the flag. The back judge came in and yeah, that's threw not it a horse collar. A horse collar is when you grab the pads, the shoulder pads from behind. You grab the jersey. Yeah. Second down and eight. McCombs again burst right up the middle for a first down down to the 25 yard line. I like this Lyle McCombs. Lyle McCombs has been consistent the entire night. He's got a little bit of shake, but he's also a good north south runner. I've been impressed. Not a very big guy at all. Just a 5'8, uh, 170 pound running back, but does a good job of running between the tackles. Yeah, he gets behind his pads. He's not yeah. afraid to lower that shoulder, put that head in there. It's first and 10 at the 25. Gets the rock again. This time, Lohr submarined him. How many times we've seen Rob Lohr do that tonight? Penetrating, making plays in the backfield. He and Colt Nichter, TJ Greenstone, they got some very good defensive tackles on this team. Probably the strength of the entire defense. Remember when uh, UConn put together a really strong drive opening possession, it was a play by Rob Lohr. Once they got down there close to the 10 yard line that blew up the drive, they yep. had to settle for three. Another big play for Rob Lohr on first down. He's got three tackles for loss in this game alone. McEntee, heavy rush, throws complete to Jeremy Davis. Slung to the ground by Eric Samuels. Flags are out. Heavy pressure came that time from Fugger again. We'll check the call here from our referee, John McDade. The receiver, number 94, was covered and therefore ineligibly downfield. Offense, five-yard penalty, second down. Explain it. Another one of those dumb plays where the wide receiver was on the line of scrimmage that time, covering up an eligible tight end there in Ryan Griffin. Ryan Griffin, as soon as he left the line of scrimmage, was now ineligible because he was covered up. So second down now and 18, ball back at the 33-yard line. So you have the big play on defense by Lohr, and then you have a five-yard penalty, and now you're going in reverse, not out of field goal range for Taggart, who's really good, but you don't want to squander a great scoring opportunity. Recovered by Vanderbilt. Chase Garnum knocked it loose. And the ball was recovered by Vince Taylor. Just when you need a big play from your defense, Garnum comes free off the edge, untouched. McAtee puts the ball on the ground. Fugger trying to scoop and score there, but Vanderbilt takes over at just about midfield. A huge play, just what that Vanderbilt team needed. Vince Taylor with a big recovery back at the 49-yard line. Meantime, Fuger over there on the bench said, Vinny, baby, you took away my six. <laughs> Fuger, as we talked about earlier, opportunistic in the stripping department. Obviously, a guy that's very aware out there on the field. Tried to scoop it to score, but Taylor falling on the ball first. So we'll see if the Commodores can springboard some momentum out of the big defensive play. They have done that in their first two games. Reverse, Krause. Krause turns on the Jets and down to the 28-yard line. 23-yard pickup for Jonathan Krause. Matt, you see the Vanderbilt offense open up all their bag of tricks. Saw the halfback pass there earlier. Now come back to Krause on the reverse. We saw Tate score on that same play last week. That's the first first down for Vanderbilt this half. It took them nearly four, 15, what, 16 minutes here to get a first down. Krause, two carries, 29 yards, Chris. Only one catch tonight. He's been more effective on the ground than he has as a wide receiver. Larry Smith all kinds of time. Long throw to the side. It is complete to Udamuma at the 21-yard uh, line. Matt, that was a good play by Udamuma, too, coming back to the ball, trying to throw the football across the field. That's a long throw. Very easily could have been intercepted, but Udam made a good play by coming back to it, securing the catch. Second down, ball at the 21. Lassie, the fullback, checks into the ball game, and now timeout Charge ball. timeout, Vanderbilt, their first of the half. 
So Vanderbilt, rather than blow the play here, calls a timeout to make sure everybody's on the same page. It's a smart play. Yeah. They haven't had a scoring opportunity like this since the first quarter. SEC football on CSS is brought to you by Polaris, the hardest working, smoothest ride in off-road vehicles. See them at your local dealer or visit PolarisIndustries.com. And by Cook's Pest Control. Upgrade your home's termite protection to the unbeatable combination Cook's Pest Control and Centricon. Call Cook's for a free pest and termite evaluation. Nightlife here in Vanderbilt will be even better for the Commodores if they hold on and get this victory, leading UConn 14 to 13, three minutes, three seconds into the fourth quarter. And Dandy knocking on the door. Best scoring opportunity since they put two touchdowns on the board in the first quarter. Second and four here. Jerron Seymour only about a yard on the play as he bullies his way down to the 20-yard line. That winning is a habit. Unfortunately, losing is a habit as well. Vanderbilt has been in the habit of losing over the last couple seasons, but James Franklin talked to us about changing the mentality. The best way to change that mentality is by winning football games. They have got to find a way here in the fourth quarter to make plays, to win this football, football game, to give them some momentum and some confidence as they get into fourth quarter games in the SEC schedule. Third down and four coming up. Vandy two for 12 on third downs in this ball game. Big play right here. Play gets blown dead. And the play clock was down to Full zero. Full start, number 67 of the offense. Five yard penalty, third down. And that was their center, Wesley Johnson, SEC all freshman a year ago at left tackle. They moved him inside to snap the ball to Larry Smith this year, and he rarely comes off the field. A disappointing negative play right there when you had a third and manageable situation. Now third and eight. That was their first time they've been in the red zone the entire night. Last week, four of four with red zone scoring. They need to make a play here, get a touchdown, help put them up by eight points. Third down. Larry Smith, CO Moore, ball out, might go the other way. Nobody will catch Yawin Smallwood. Six for the Huskies. They've got the lead. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm talking about right there. You're in field goal range at the worst. That's the worst thing that can happen there. The sack would have been bad enough, but to turn the football over is something that Vanderbilt's done in the past. They've tried to change their ways. Smallwood, a nice job of picking the ball up. Taking it the other way for a touchdown. 62-yard run by Smallwood after the scoop. C.O. Moore jarred the ball loose, goes back to what we've been talking about all night, Chris Doring, and that is if you continually put pressure on the quarterback, you will crack the offense. And Larry Smith last week looked like he had kind of turned the corner with what James Franklin wanted him to do in terms of poise in the pocket, making smart plays. That time wasn't his fault as he didn't secure the ball well, but the pressure has been all over him the entire night. Going for two now to get the 21. McEntee on the rollout to his right. In trouble, has a man back there, it's converted. And it's his big tight end, Ryan Griffin, on the back line with the two-point conversion. And UConn with a stunning comeback of 18 unanswered points here in the second half now leads it 21-14. C.O. Moore popped it out. Yawin Smallwood took it to the house. And the Huskies on top. After they got the two-point conversion, it's a seven-point lead now in the fourth quarter. Wow, what a turn of events here in Nashville as UConn now leads Vanderbilt 21-14, four and a half minutes into this fourth quarter. Just as it looked like the Commodores were poised to finally score for the first time since the first quarter. Tables turned, C.O. Moore, the sack ball out, Y'all and Smallwood 62 yards later in a two-point conversion, and the Huskies have a touchdown lead. Yeah, how about that uh, penalty there that caused some 
uh, change in play calling as they got down near the red zone. Unfortunately for Vanderbilt, sack, fumble, turnover, touchdown. All right, Chris Dorian, let's take a look at tonight's Geico. Great save of the game. May have saved the game for the Huskies right here. C.O. Moore popped Larry Smith. Yawin Smallwood scooped it and ran. You mentioned earlier the pressure. UConn has brought all kinds of pressure here in the second half, trying to disrupt Larry Smith in that Vanderbilt offense, creating the turnover. Nice awareness by Smallwood to pick it and go. And Yawin Smallwood, five tackles and the fumble recovery for touchdown tonight. Smallwood had eight tackles a week ago against Fordham and a guy out of Worcester Mass he was really kind of stepped in a redshirt freshman they were but they thought that Jerome Williams would be their starting Mike linebacker this year until they got hurt in the spring Larry Smith now Vandy playing from behind for the first time since they trailed three nothing wow look at that throw down by Junior over there took Kraus and abused him that's a nice play by Kraus there did a good job of Pushing his route up the field, getting out of his break and making a play. A much needed completion for Vanderbilt. Vandy, a minuscule 28 yards on 10 drives since they scored their last touchdown. First and 10, ball at the 36 yard line. And UConn has kind of turned the tables on Vandy tonight. They've scored. 14 points off the three turnovers. Aguilar making the tackle over there. What's Boyd doing making catches without scoring touchdowns? First time he's done it. <laughs> three for three prior to that game. Still 75%. Now it is second down and six. Ball at the 40-yard line. We'll see how Bandy handles adversity almost prophetically. James Franklin talked about that with us yesterday. He was interested to see how his team's going to handle adversity. Well, he gets a chance to see it here. Rouse in trouble. Too many men out there to get around. Smallwood, heard that name before, tackled Krause at the 40-yard line. Now Krause slow getting up. That's a great play there by Twyon Martin. Get in the backfield, disrupting. We saw Smallwood string it out. That's a tremendous run by Kraus to get back to the line of scrimmage. Smallwood slowed him down. Gratz finished it off. Now it's third down and six. Larry Smith, heavy rush! And goes down at the 30. Quarterback sandwich, the two defensive ends, Teddy Jenkins, Jennings Rather, and Trevardo Williams met in the middle. And Larry Smith got sandwiched. Saw Jennings come free again. Off the edge there. Zach Stacy tried to grab his jersey to keep him from getting to Larry Smith, but another negative play for Vanderbilt's offense. And how about the fancy footwork from Trevardo Williams? Just Larry Smith looked like he might get out of there. Yeah. And Trevardo got his big feet in there and tripped <laughs> him up and didn't let him get away. Ken. Nick Williams watches it hit 10 yards in front of him. And it will be down to see where they spot that thing. 31-yard kick. And UConn back on offense at their own 39. And now they have the lead. We have eight minutes less than that to play. SEC football on CSS is brought to you by Regions Bank. Want more control and balance with your finances? Switch to Regions, the easier way to bank. Regions Bank, the official bank of the SEC. By Tony Sacheries, turn your same old into Creole with Tony Sacheries' original Creole seasoning. Tony Sacheries makes everything taste great. And by Geico, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Call Geico at 1-800-947-AUTO. That's 1-800-947-AUTO, or visit geico.com. A look at Broadway here in the Music City. Vanderbilt leading most of the night, now trailing UConn 21-14 as the Huskies go back on offense at their 39-yard line. Casey Hayward making the tackle on the Combs. 
Let's take a look at the hardest working player brought to you by Polaris. And tonight it's Vandy defensive end Tim Fuger. Three tackles, two sacks, and a quarterback hurry. Tim Fuger, our hardest working player of the game, brought to you by Polaris. Yeah, the Vanderbilt defense really has done a good job tonight, only giving up six points as the rest of the points have come off of the turnover there that uh, Smallwood took to the house and the block punt. So both defenses are doing very well this evening. Nothing doing there for McCombs as again. The Vandy defense coming up strong. Westman was shaken up on the play. Cole Nichter made the tackle, and they'll blow the whistles here so the trainers can get out there and take a look at Westman. Nine tackles for loss for a minus 41 yards for that Vandy defense tonight. The UConn defense has played very well. It's been big plays by the UConn defense and special teams that have the Huskies in the lead. It was two big plays by the Vandy offense and not much else that had Vandy in the yeah, lead. Very little offense from both sides. In fact, neither team has had a drive of longer than eight plays tonight. Both big plays, as you mentioned, for Vanderbilt led to touchdowns. But other than that, really not a whole lot of offense from either team. The SEC plays on CSS. Don't miss more live SEC football presented by Regions Bank all season long. Tune in next Saturday night. September 17th, 7.30 Eastern, 6.30 Central, as we visit Fayetteville, Arkansas. See those Arkansas Razorbacks take on the Troy Trojans. You can visit css-sports.com for complete schedules and updates. You see Bobby Petrino and how he has got that Razorbacks program headed in the right direction in a real big hurry. I don't know if you can call him, uh, that Arkansas team, a dark horse. I, I feel like they have a great chance this year to play for an SEC title, even though they're in a very difficult West division of the mm -hmm. SEC. You saw today two of those teams slugging it out in Auburn and Mississippi State, but I really feel like Arkansas has a chance to be the cream of the crop from the SEC this year. Tough Arkansas, of course, playing in that division with Alabama and LSU. Got to play both those teams on the road. That was going to be difficult for them to win the West before Niall Davis went down with his season ending knee injury. You see Kyle Westman helped to the sideline. It's third down and nine. This is a big down for the Vandy defense as they try to get off the field. Showing blitz. They're bringing it. Marv got to the quarterback. Intercepted by Hayward. His 10th career pick. He's got some space to run. Tries to get to the near side. One man to beat. Touchdown. Penalties decline. There's all the play. There's a touchdown. Vandy a point away from tying the game. That's exactly what Vanderbilt needed. They needed to play on defense to turn the momentum back into their favor. As we saw last week, very opportunistic defense. Last week it was Trey Wilson taking one to the house. This time Casey Hayward stepping in front of Johnny McAtee's pass. To potentially tie this football game up. Spear on to try to knot it. Well, the offense wasn't getting the job done. Casey Hayward takes matters into his own hands. Marv hit the quarterback. Hayward took it in. We are tied at 21 with 6.45 to play. And Matt, it may have been a great interception by Hayward to step in front and take it to the house. Let's take a look at the replay. A lot of credit goes to the rest of that Vanderbilt defense. Pressure coming from all over. McAtee rushed, throws the ball behind the receiver. Hey, we're just a ball hawk. As you mentioned, 10th interception of his career. Another look at that pressure coming up the middle. Marv, Scott free. And hey, we're the big pick. Similar theme, same thing we were talking about with the UConn pressure. You keep bringing it on that quarterback, he will crack. Something will happen good for your defense if you keep getting in the face of that quarterback and Vanderbilt able to do that against McAtee. Johnny McAtee. Third pick. The trick shot quarterback. I don't know how many of you guys 
have seen his viral YouTube video, but a uh, guy that is known for his accuracy has not been all that accurate tonight. Just 10 of 22 for 99 yards, three interceptions. That one, the big one. A lot easier to throw it in that garbage can <laughs> against air. Yeah, you get uh, Chris when Marv coming up your, up the gut there. It's very difficult to deliver a strike. got a big ball of mean that wants to slap you upside the head, then it becomes a different proposition. Personal foul added on to the kickoff here, so Spear will kick off from the 45-yard line. So this should mean UConn starts at the 20 if Spear does his job. Unless they try something funny here, just kick it through the back of the end zone. And he does. Well, he didn't quite get it far enough. Wow, this is going to be returned. Works out even better. Williams gets stopped at the 15. I thought for sure he kicks this to the back of the end zone. He didn't. Well, Spear put a lot of air under that one. The kick team leaving from their own 45-yard line, a chance to get down there and make a play inside the 20. UConn has done very little on offense tonight. A great opportunity again for Vanderbilt's defense to give their offense a chance to have some good field position. So UConn on offense from the 14. We're down to 640 to play in this game. First and 10, ball at the 14. McEntee in there at quarterback. Pressure coming from Vanderbilt. They pick it up. McEntee throws out here. Long throw trying to get it to Chief Moore. Incomplete. Trey Wilson was a shadow. And now it's going to be second down. Again, you saw McEntee throw before the receiver Moore was ready. That's that pressure. Garnum coming off the edge, making him get rid of it before the receiver's out of his break. Second down and 10 coming up. Twenty-one, twenty-one game. A game dominated. Big plays, defense, and special teams. McCombs, nothing doing. A couple of yards on that play, and now it's going to be third down. And Lyle McCombs, our right stuff player of the game, brought to you by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Lyle McCombs has exhibited the right stuff to win. Academy Sports and Outdoors, right stuff, low price every day. 26 for 117, but in this passing situation, he comes out. They bring the bigger back ends on the weave for pass pro. Third down, under six to play. Protection, McAtee breaks down a little bit, throws. Delahunt was the intended receiver. Trey Wilson thought he might have another pick six and jumped in front of that pass. I can't speak enough to how good Vanderbilt's defense has been tonight. Nine tackles for losses, four sacks, three interceptions. They scored a touchdown themselves. Certainly have been the stronger phase of this Vanderbilt team. Wagner, the punt. Cole, fair catch, made at the 40. And now Bandy goes on offense 60 yards away. And Vandy forcing the turnovers tonight, much like they did against Elon, it has paid off for him. Yeah, very opportunistic. McAtee's been under all sorts of pressure the entire night, throwing the ball without being able to hang in there. The pressure from behind forcing the fumble. And then the big interception by Casey Hayward, his 10th interception, going for a touchdown to tie up this football game here in the fourth quarter. First and 10. Larry Smith and the offense out there, if they can generate anything, can perhaps get Vandy in scoring position to win this game. Seven total turnovers tonight. Larry Smith, they're bringing pressure on him. C.O. Moore drops him again. Second sack for C.O. Moore. That's a six yard loss. And the seventh sack for the Huskies tonight. See. Don Brown, the defensive coordinator, continuing to get pressure on Larry Smith. He's not been able to hang in there at all this second half. They've got to find a way to protect Smith a little bit better. Wow, look at that defensive numbers there. 15 tackles for loss, seven sacks, two picks, block punt, fumble recovery, two touchdowns from the defense. Zach Stacy forgotten name tonight. They'll remember him now. Still on his feet. Uh-oh, watch out. 
Shifts the ball to the outside arm. And finally down to the 15-yard line. 48-yard chunk for Zach Stacy. Trevardo Williams finally ran him down. And that's just tremendous individual effort. Stacy almost caught on the edge and then makes a great cut back inside and across the field. You kind of been waiting for him to make a play tonight. Steps up here in the fourth quarter for Vanderbilt. Empty backfield for Larry Smith going for the six and incomplete. Udom Uma, the intended receiver in the far corner of the end zone. Second down. Four and a half to play. Last time Vanderbilt got down here, they self-destructed with the penalty that set him back and then the fumble that led to UConn's touchdown. They're in field goal range. The last thing you want to do here is make a mistake. If you don't have a throw, a man open, throw the ball away. Live to play the next down. Second down, 10, ball at the 15. Seymour. What's doing right there? Again, that UConn defensive line blowing up the play at the line of scrimmage. Juan Martin on the tackle. Juan Martin on that tackle. Now it's going to be third down and nine. Will likely be under four minutes when they snap the ball here. Vanderbilt's been poor on third down tonight. Just two for 14, something they've struggled with the last couple of years. Big play for both teams right here. Larry Smith in the pocket, jumps out of the pocket. No running lane, goes down at the 13. And the ball is going to be on the left hash as they bring Spear out for a field goal attempt. Not a bad play by Larry Smith. The last thing he wanted to do was throw the ball into some tight windows and, and an interception there kills you. Good job by not making a stupid play. Sometimes that's the best play you can make. Hold on to the ball, allow your team to kick the field goal. Spear in his first year as the Vanderbilt kicker replaced Ryan Fowler, who had been the kicker for the Commodores the last couple of seasons. Spear had a 33-yard field goal in his first career attempt last week against Elon. And a timeout has been called by Vanderbilt. That leaves them with two, the same number that UConn has. So a chance for Vanderbilt to take the lead again, but there's plenty of time left for UConn to get back on offense and do something. And, uh, I don't know why they would do something now. They haven't been able to do anything all night. It's been about defensive domination here. The thing that I'm the most pleased with in watching this football game from the Vanderbilt standpoint, they were down. We talked about their body language when bad things happen. Casey Hayward, the senior, the veteran, steps up, make a play. Marv on the pressure there. Your leaders have found a way to get Vanderbilt back in this ball game, and now a chance to take the lead with three minutes left. Spear, this is a 32-yard attempt. You got a good look at it on your sofa at home. High snap, ball on its way. And Spear has put Vanderbilt into the lead. 32-yard field goal. Commodores back on top, 24-21, with 2.56 to play. Matt, not a tougher job in football than to be the holder. And really not a lot of credit given to those guys. A great job right there from the high snap. Kent does a good job of getting it down, and Spear splits the uprights there. One of those overlooked players on the field until they make a mistake. Well, two big things, two big components go into every kick. That's the snapper. In this case, it's Andrew East. And in that case, the holder, and that is Richard Kent, who's also the punter. And they work on that stuff all the time. And you're right, the only time anybody ever notices is when it goes wrong. They tried to throw me back there when I was <laughs> in the NFL to see if I could learn how to, to hold on uh, placement tries it's a very difficult job you got to catch put it down get the, the strings in the right the, the laces in the right place a lot of pressure at that spot ram trucks scoring drive six plays 
45 yards, actually a 48-yard run by Stacy, and they lost three yards in the drive after that, but it does get them the field goal by Spear, and it does put Vanderbilt back on top as we are now under three minutes to play. Another big play in this ball game. We've seen very little consistent drive by either of these offenses, but it's been about big plays on both sides tonight. Big East versus SEC. Earlier today, Tennessee beat Cincinnati in the SEC Big East matchup. The second half of the doubleheader here in southeastern United States. And the return up to the 31-yard line by Nick Williams. That's where UConn goes on offense. At the very least, needing a field goal to tie this game and send it to overtime. They got the man to do it. And Taggart, who's the all-time leading kicker, in school history. This 21-21 score here a little bit misleading as Vanderbilt's defense has been much better, only giving up a pair of field goals. One of those coming off of a Vanderbilt turnover that set up UConn inside the red zone, able to hold them out both times they've been down there, make them settle for field goals. We'll see if they can come up big here and preserve a victory. UConn on offense. Pass behind McCombs. They've stuck with McEntee pretty much the entire night. The fourth year junior out of Fullerton, California. He has not shown much, to be honest with you. The uh, Michael Niebrick, who was the star quarterback out of the state of Virginia, had close to 5,000 all-purpose yards as a high school senior, 59 touchdowns. Got in one series in the second quarter, and we haven't seen him since. I haven't seen Cummings at all in the second half, really, with the exception of that package down around the goal line. McEntee, 10 for 25, 99 yards, three picks, second and 10. Off the hands of Tabucky Jones and nearly deflected into the outstretched arms of Trey Wilson. Third down now. Disappointing because he had Tabucky Jones Jr. open there, but another errant pass by McEntee. They've had opportunities here tonight, but just haven't been able to complete passes. Third down and 10. What do you do on this third down play? Do you try to get a little bit of it, set up a fourth down? Or are you going for the... Well, you can expect pressure. I guarantee Vanderbilt brings pressure here to make him get the ball out of his hands quickly. So you got to take what that defense is going to give you. Huskies have failed in 11 of 14 third down attempts. Pressure from Marr. Flags out. They may have stepped across the line of scrimmage or... From the start. No. Nope. Number one of the offense. Five yard penalty. Third down. John Louis. Matt, that was an all-out blitz. Cover zero, bringing everybody. John Louis was trying to get himself in position to help pick up that blitz, causing a little bit of a mistake there to set UConn back even more. Yep, there it is. Marv made him jump. Marv's coming. The guy off the slot's coming as well. Pressure from everywhere with Bob Shoup's defense. Yeah, third and 15. You, you got to wonder. I mean, the defensive players have got to love the scheme. Oh, yeah. Uh, the game clock operator, please reset the clock to 2 minutes and 40 seconds. I'm thinking 2 if, 4 0. If you're a defensive player and you get a new coordinator and says, you know what, we're bringing it all, baby. We're bringing everything after the quarterback. It's going to come from different places and from different people, but we're going to be aggressive and play pressure defense. It's a great way to play. I know those guys enjoy it, but what it is, it's a huge compliment to the corners as well, to both Trey Wilson and Casey Hayward, the trust that they can match up one-on-one -on, -one on the outside is a big compliment. Got to live on that island. You got two good ones out there for Vanderbilt have proven they can do it. McEntee has some time, and now the time is gone. Lord drops him. Fourth down, fifth sack for Vanderbilt tonight. And Rob Lohr has had himself a huge game. That time, Vanderbilt's defense dropped back into coverage. That was more of a coverage sack than anything else. Pressure came from the defensive line as the pocket collapsed, forcing UConn and Coach Paul Pasqualoni to make a tough call here on fourth down. Well, you only have one timeout remaining, so you can't punt it away. Yeah. You have no option there. James Franklin will take this opportunity to huddle everybody up. Fourth down and 16. I, I don't think you can't punt no, they got to go way. for it here. They're going to run out of time. If they do try to go for if they don't go for it, they punt the football. Not enough timeouts to 
keep you in a chance to win, I don't believe. Now, the only, do the math in my head. No, here. the only way that works is if you have three, maybe two. You can maybe do it if you have two timeouts. Certainly, if you have three timeouts left, you punt here. I'll tell you what, <laughs> I don't know if a tougher situation to be in to try to convert than fourth and 16. And I asked Bob Shoup this yesterday directly. When you're in a third and long or fourth and long situation, you like to play back or you like to bring pressure and make him get out of his hands? I'm willing to guarantee, I'll bet you dinner tonight, Matt, that he brings pressure and makes McAtee throw the football. Fourth and 16. Four-man front pressure. McEntee going downfield. Jump ball and incomplete. Flags are down back at the 19-yard line. If this is a hold, Bandy's going to have the ball. Holding. Number 70 of the offense. Penalties decline. First down. Bill. Bandy's ball and Bandy's ball to win. Well, Matt, I owe you dinner here because you saw the Bandy defense drop back. They rushed four. McAtee had plenty of time. But just nobody to throw it to as everybody was dropping into coverage. So the ball goes over on downs at the 25-yard line. 2.09 to play. UConn has one timeout remaining. Bandy just needs a first down. They might be able to do it without even getting a first down. Haven't been able to run the ball very well at all tonight with the exception of that big run by Zach Stacy and the Jerron Seymour touchdown in the first quarter. But I guarantee you they won't throw the football here. First and 10. Zach Stacy runs right into the middle. UConn uses their last time out. So UConn stops the clock for the last time for 2.02 to play. Second down and eight coming up. I'm trying to do the math in my head as well. So I'm thinking that Bandy uh, might be able to kill this thing by themselves. I'd like to thank everybody who followed us on Twitter throughout tonight's ball game. You can follow us out throughout the entire week covering SEC football and all the big sports in the Southeast. You can follow me at Matt underscore Stewart CSS. You can also be our friend on Facebook and follow the network to get updates on scores and games and everything else at CSS Sports. So second down and eight coming up. 2.02 to play. And Bandy on the verge of doing something they haven't done in three years. And that's went back to back football games. Big thing here, you got to secure the football. The last thing you want to do is put the ball on the ground, both hands on it. Now operating Larry empty Smith backfield. Keep it in his hands right here. Shotgun. Flags are down. Larry Smith lunges forward to the 11 yard line. But we'll check the flags. I don't think they had enough men on the line of scrimmage after they motioned out of their tight set. Illegal formation. Five men in the backfield on the offense. Five-yard penalty. Second down. Well, don't want to jump the gun here, but let's say Bandy holds on for the win. They'll be 2-0, and Chris, with Ole Miss coming to town next week, an Ole Miss team they beat last yeah. year in Oxford. They've had some success against Ole Miss in the past, and certainly a uh, SEC opponent would like to get off, the, off the, the, the start with a win against an SEC team here as well. 2-0, though, got to feel good for the Vanderbilt faithful as James Franklin here has come in and, and immediately created some enthusiasm and, and really lived up to his promise here in game, game one and two. Some great tight games here in the SEC in week number two. South Carolina beats Georgia 45-42. Auburn knocked off Mississippi State 41-34. Flags down again on Vandy as they're trying to yep. nail down a 24-21 win over UConn here. Here's the kind of false start. Number 66 of the offense. Five-yard penalty, second down. you got to have poise in these situations. Vanderbilt has not been in a lot of these situations in the last couple of years where they've been able to run their four-minute offense to try to run the clock out. We've seen two penalties in a row. Now 
going the wrong way and trying to ice this football game. So now second down, ball back at the 33. But time has run off, 132 now. We'll see if they put time back on. I think the official is going to talk about that right here. Wouldn't time go back on? They ran time and the play was blown dead. Time shouldn't have come off. Should have right? been a dead ball. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what Paul Pascaloni is talking about right now. The biggest enemy for the Huskies right now is that clock, which they can no longer stop since they've used up all their timeouts. Don't want to uh, exaggerate the situation. Don't want to say that Vanderbilt football fever is at a fevered pitch. But James Franklin. The clock did not run erroneously. It is now second down. Well, there you go. 132. No time did come off the clock. But Franklin at a 2-0 start after back-to-back 2-10 -back seasons here in Nashville. I think certainly starting to grab the attention. He had the attention of folks around the Southeast just from his infectious enthusiasm for the job, but now he's backing it up with some wins. Plus the recruiting class he put together for 2011, the commits that he has for 2012, certainly looks like he's got some people believing in Vanderbilt football. Second down, 18. Right up the middle, Zach Stacy Down to the 23-yard line. And the clock will roll. Vanderbilt in no hurry. They will not have to snap the ball again until I think right around uh, 40 seconds or so, right? 40 seconds. Yeah. yeah. Maybe a little bit less, maybe around the 36, 37 second mark. And Vanderbilt on the verge of uh, winning back to back games since they started the season 5 0 in 2008. The significance of that 5 0 start was it built them enough cushion to get to a bowl game for the first time since George McIntyre took Vandy to a bowl in 82, and they won a bowl for the first time since 55. Long way from that, but baby steps for this Vanderbilt program as Zach Stacy is stopped, and that's gonna do it. Play clock sets at 40, game clock now at 32. This game is over. James Franklin getting hugs and handshakes. Vanderbilt is 2-0. James Franklin going to let his team have an opportunity to enjoy this victory. 2-0 here for the first time since 2008. Players certainly excited about the way they started this season. And that, I give them a lot of credit. Coming from behind there, that game could have easily gone to yeah. UConn. They made a play when they had to. Yeah, the adversity that James Franklin talked about, how would his team handle adversity? Well, the adversity came when Smallwood scooped up that 62-yard fumble return after C.O. Moore popped Larry Smith and the ball came out. And all of a sudden, a game that they had led the entire game, they now trailed 21-14. They responded with Casey Hayward, the senior, stepping up making a play. Remember what James Franklin told us just yesterday. He said, that's why recruiting is important. You get guys that when everything's going wrong, he can step up and make a play and win the game for you. Hayward did that. Let's go down to Sandra Golden for James Franklin. Coach Franklin, back-to-back -back wins for the first time for Vanderbilt since 2008. How does this feel? You know, really great opportunity for our team to learn how to win, and that's what we did. That's a good football team we played tonight. Just really proud of our guys. Talk about your defense. Started out slow, came on really strong, made huge plays all night long. Really proud of him. Casey Hayward steps up like he always did. Thought Laura had a tremendous game as well. Talk a little more about Casey and that big play, but more importantly, you said something to us yesterday about the best athletes stepping up and doing what they needed to do and as a senior in Hayward. Yeah, we talked about that yesterday about, about recruiting and the players that we have. We had some really good players, and Casey stepped up, made a play for us, and, and that, that's what we have to have. We've got to have guys like that that are winners. Uh, you need to enjoy the win, is what your assistant coach has told you. To make sure you enjoy this moment. What are you going to do tonight? How are you going to make sure this lasts a little and that the team knows how important the W is? Yeah, we're going to go celebrate with our students and our fans. We're going to celebrate in that locker room. And Sunday, we're on to the next deal.
Thank you, Coach. Thank you very much. Matt. All right, thank you, Sandra. And the next deal will be their SEC opener next Saturday against the Ole Miss Rebels as Bandy will try to make it three in a row. A 24-21 victory tonight over the UConn Huskies. Paul Pascaloni loses his first game as the UConn head coach. Bandy's defense came up big on a night of big plays. It was the Commodores who prevailed. The Ram Wrap-Up Show coming up next. And now for Chris Doring, Sandra Golden, and our entire crew, I'm Matt Stewart. Good night from Nashville. Congratulations to the Commodores. 2-0 with a 24-21 victory.